Hello, welcome to the Reprojection Podcast. So, recentered podcast. Sorry about that. I do get confused now and again. Um, and uh, my name is Gary, and joining me is Lee and Rog, as always. And this week we've also got Steve. Who, Steve, you join us every now and again for well, usually when we've had a like. There's been a piece of hardware that's been released, but this time, among everything else that we're going to talk about in this episode, we've got you on to talk about the uh, the un- Unreal Engine VR mod as well from the perspective of a 4090 owner because uh, that seems to be uh, the best way to play this. But we'll get into that later. But before we do get into all of that stuff, Steve, why don't you, uh, how are you? What have you been up to since we last spoke? Well, well, first of all, that sounded very scripted, Gary. Did you plan to say <laughs> reprojection there? I did, yeah. I was trying my best to <laughs> act it out, but yeah. Do you know, do you, do you know, do you know the, wor- the worst thing is, is if I'd have hosted it this week, I had the exact same joke set up and ready to go. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> that was good. Well, it got me. I, I laughed. So, um, yeah, I think things well, I are, I things are so. going okay. Um, I don't really have much going on other than the UE VR, uh, particularly in the world of VR. Uh, outside of VR, yeah, we got through the holidays. Things are, are you know, turn of the year. It's cold now. We got a, a lot of cold weather coming in, and I'm coaching my daughter's basketball team, so that's been fun. Nice, nice. Um, yeah, so it's been a while since our last episode, um, and in fact, this one because I, I was talking about the in the last episode that we weren't going to have another one until maybe the twentieth of January, but. The itch got back to me sooner than I thought, so I thought we'd, we'd <laughs> arrange it for this week. But Lee, how are you? What have you been up to since we last spoke? Yeah, I'm not doing too bad actually. I had, I had some good results from. I know I keep banging on that me a lot of time because I am, but uh, I'll stop going on about it. Bit like reprojection, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, I had some results back from my blood, and it's six months are all good now. So fingers crossed. That's one thing off the list <laughs> I can cross off. But yeah, same as Steve, a quiet Christmas, really. It is cold here. We're getting braced for 10 centimetres of snow, maybe in the UK next week. So that'll bring us all to a standstill. Yeah. Uh, like it always does here. But yeah, I played a bit of UEVR. I've uh, been playing, yeah, it's just some of the games that we'll get to talk about when we get into it. But yeah, not too bad. Not too bad, really. Yeah. And uh, Rog, what about you? What have you been up to? Not much really. It's been, it's mainly been Asgard's Wrath Two, yeah, um, which I am absolutely loving. It's, I mean, we, we, I'm you know, because what we've got on the list, I, I'm going to end up talking about it later anyway. It's, it's not going to be it's not going to be a surprise when we start talking about our favourite games from last year. Yeah, um, mine will be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, just on the on the reprojection thing there, the, the bizarre thing was Artful had mentioned on Discord that we should actually change our podcast name to Retro Rambling and Reprojection, <laughs> right, um, yeah. which I, which it's hard to argue with. Um, so that that was going to be the that was going to be the joke, but you you beat me to it. <laughs> yeah, it just seemed like with with the last one, we we have um, spoken behind the scenes. We are going to try and cut back on all this constant bashing and reprojection all the time because it, it is i think we've made up a point on it and it's getting a little mm-hmm. bit boring now to carry on with it all the time so um but yeah for me then it's been a few weeks and like roger been playing asgard's wrath quite a two uh two quite a bit um among certain other things as well i've been i don't know if you guys have played or well been into the horizon worlds uh creation thing i've spent like no. probably about half an hour in horizon worlds in in like the actual social area and then i've spent many many hours like probably about five six hours in the creation thing because it it's actually quite good it's really basic but you can get things up and running quite quickly in there so i've been mm. messing around with that over the past week or two as well which um yeah. Although I know Horizon Worlds gets bashed on a lot, I I, I think the creation suite is quite good in there. Um, <laughs> is anyway. this the same thing what I've seen, Gary? Because I'm sure I've seen a video on YouTube somewhere where someone had created like a like a studio and like put like ten cameras on it and things like that. So it, when they were talking to someone, it looked like they were in the studio. And I think that was made in Horizon Worlds. That I saw. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, I mean it's it's like visual scripting stuff, but it's very basic and you can make pretty much anything i mean within reason pretty much anything you want within the bounds of what they allow in there um 
but yeah, I mean, it's it's just good to mess around in there and get something up and running. Really, it's not gonna you're not gonna be able to create as God's Wrath two in there or anything like that. But you can create <laughs> little little bits and bobs, which is quite enjoyable anyway to me. Well, um, well, I mean, talking about creating stuff, I did actually challenge Gary to a, an Unreal Engine five coding competition, and he, if for some reason he he refused. So I don't know what that was all about. I don't know. I thought we agreed not to bring that up on the on the show, Roger. I don't know why why you're bringing it up now. This is this is. A... I, d- I, d- I didn't get the money into my PayPal account. Yeah. Well. Well, I didn't accept the challenge. That's why. There's no way I'm going <laughs> to accept that kind of challenge. Uh, but yeah, we've been messing around in Unreal Engine as well, haven't we, Roger? So, <laughs> Gary, you you should yeah. you should agree to the challenge if he agrees to do a uh, book writing. Uh, challenge as well <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah we can we can do that it's writing books uh easy enough as long as you've got the patience to actually do it it's an absolute flipping nightmare <laughs> it's just the you just sit down in front of a computer with the blank screen and you just think oh geez i've got to do this all day today again that's, <laughs> that's the worst part of it uh, but no, Unreal Engine is, is enjoyable just to go in and mess around in that as well. In the same way, just to just to create some stuff and get some things up and running. And there's a, yeah, it's, it's enjoyable, that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, anyway, let's get on with the show. So we've got a few things that we've been playing before we get on to some news. And then we're going to go through the Unreal Engine VR mod uh, discussion, as well as talking about our top three personal individual VR games of 2023 as well. So we'll go over to Roger first on this, what we've been playing. Trackcraft, what do you think? <clears throat> Trackcraft, yep. Uh, ooh, where, where are we? Yeah. Um, okay, I'm totally not set up for this because normally Gary loves a video up on the screen for all of us to have a look at. So we've got some references to what we're actually talking about. But that's me this week, isn't it? So uh, <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah, so video on the screen courtesy of uh, Paradise Decay because it meant that people don't then have to look at my messy room and can look at somebody else's room instead. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this is on... I think it's Apple. Is it just Apple Lab, isn't it? I can't... I've totally and utterly forgotten now. I think it um, is, yeah. It's for yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think so, and, yeah. Yeah. Basically, it's sort of track mania um, in which you've got a multitude of tracks that you <laughs> you drive a car along and try to get from A to B as quickly as you possibly can. It's all basically time trials. Um, and it is track mania from the side of the track rather than from, from uh, behind the car view. It's The entire thing is it's done in an MR mode. I've not been able to, as far as I can see, there's no sort of full-on full VR mode. And I don't think it needs to be MR only, in all honesty. It's, it's a bit of a weird one. But you can scale the track up and down to the size of the room. So if you, if you sat on your couch, you can scale it down nice and small so you can sort of see most of the most of the track in front of you. If you want to stand up and walk about, you can scale it, the, the track up to the full size of the room. Um, some of the tracks have got like portals where you'll drive into one portal, come out of another, so you can line those up with your wall if, you, if you're really bothered or anything. But yeah, it, it's a time trial game. It's one of those games you will know if you like it or not, probably from just looking at the video or... If you've say if you've played Track Mania before, if you like that, you will like this. Um, and yeah, I like it. It's it's I've got a thing for small for car games. You know, where you're driving small cars about in time trial type modes or races. Um, I've probably spent more time in Mini Motor Racing X, and probably anybody listening to this podcast, I'd imagine, I spent a ridiculous amount of time playing that on PC and then on PSVR as well. And this is an yeah, it, it's just a fun time waster. Um, the only two real negatives I've got about it are that the leaderboards don't display you can't toggle on a list of your friends it's just that like I think the top 10 per track it shows Um, you you can't just display your friends list on there so that I think that needs to be added on Um, the other one as well was there was there was a slight bizarre thing with the performance where it didn't seem to depend on what was on the screen it just seemed random that occasionally the performance would drop and it was just on the car you could really see it sort of judder about and then it'd stop and then you could play the same track again and there wouldn't be a performance problem at all and it, it's just a really weird thing but i think you can sort of really count it as a you know it's on app lab so count it as a sort of early access title um but it's i think it's like 11 quid um eight pounds something if you use, if you use a discount code and uh, yeah, it gets a thumbs up from me. It's a, it's a fun time waster. It's one of those you can stick it on literally for a few minutes or you can stick it, you know, you'll put it on think, I'll just have a few minutes on this and then half an hour later you're still playing it because you're trying to beat the times or whatever. 
Um, and yeah, I, I found I found it fun. I've got into the top ten on a few of the tracks, so I'm I'm happy with that. And yeah, you know what? You'll know whether you like this sort of game or not just by looking at the at the video. Um, yeah, yeah. It's you know. it's own and it's only ten pounds ninety nine, isn't it? As well. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, it's not not a bad price for that as well. Looks kind of cool. I mean, I did see it mentioned a lot on Twitter, but the only reason I saw this mentioned because people were slamming micro machines and saying, get this instead. Yeah. So I don't know whether that's, <laughs> I mean, I've not got the game, so I can't vouch for either of them, but that's no, the only reason I, I saw this pop up. I've not played micro machines either, but like, like you say, I, I, I've seen probably two or three reviews where they absolutely annihilated micro machines and they, and they all said, just get truck craft instead. So, mm. you know. That's quite cool. You know, when, when you see like the cars falling off and things like that, and it's falling onto the carpet, um, in, in PD's video, if we're watching all PD's video, it's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, it's it's good. I I, I, re, I enjoyed it for what it is. It's a good time waster. It's not expensive, and yeah, like I say, you'll know whether you like this sort of thing or not. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So moving on, then I picked up Townsman VR, um, which is it's an older PC title. I think it came out in 2022 on PC. And now it's just been released on Quest, but interestingly, it's only been released on the Quest 3, and that's one of the the things that people have been reporting on this more than the game itself, it seems. Um, so it's the first Quest 3 exclusive. Am, am I right in saying that? Because it's not really been publicised in that way. Um, yeah, that's that's what a lot of people have been saying. I've, I've not seen the official statement from it, but I've I've seen that repeated a lot. Yeah, and it, like I say, it's not it's not really been publicised or or said that this is the first Quest Three exclusive. It's just quietly been released on the store, and it only has Quest Three um, listed on the available platform. So that's why. And looking at it, of course, you you can see from the video if you're watching this on YouTube or if um, you you know you go and look at some trailers of this, it's not necessarily you wouldn't think it would be pushing the boundaries of a Quest 3 or anything like that. And I was thinking about this because, of course, you would think that a developer, this is a medieval city builder, by the way, I should mention that. Um, but you would think that the developer of this would want to reach as many people as possible. And you would think if they could get it running on a Quest 2 kind of platform as well, then it would, I guess, I don't know what, increase the audience by about 10 times or something maybe more than that i don't yeah. know um so you would think that if they could get it running on the quest 2 and maybe that will come in the future then they would want to do that but i was thinking because this was pc first maybe it's just a little bit more of a difficult task to mm. downgrade it when they were aiming for a pc platform in the first place there's just things that are not necessarily sort of graphics related but other things inherent within it that uh, pushing it a little bit further so i don't know maybe it will come to quest 2 in the future but i played um the first three levels of this game and it starts off so it is a, a medieval city builder and along the lines of plenty of older games that we've probably all played in the past like settlers and like a medieval version of sim city in in a way those kinds of games where you're managing different resources and stuff but it starts off where you're stranded in the ocean on this ship which needs repairing so you repair the ship and you find an island and then you have to start um building certain structures in order to just survive on the island and then eventually once you've this is the tutorial level once you've survived for long enough then a ship will come along and agree to take you sort of a little bit closer to your destination where you actually want to go but but you don't have enough resources to get all the way there so they sort of drop you off on another island so it's all level based you build up these these islands by gathering resources building structures and just surviving for a period of time really um but it's well done and i've this is one i've considered picking up on pc quite a few times honestly because it looks like my kind of game and it turns out it is i think it's really enjoyable it's really well done and um i think so you, you manage all of these different people your population grows as they usually do on, on these kinds of games and you can assign different people to different tasks but at the same time because you're sort of this large god kind of character you can pop these people down tell them to cut down a tree gather these logs and then they'll start to take these logs to it to a certain area where they're stored and then you can you yourself can manually pick up these logs if you've got something else another structure that's being built you can pick them up and not and sort of speed up the process you don't necessarily just have to rely on these people giving them jobs you can help them out pick up the log give it to somebody that, that was traveling to 
get these logs anyway so you can sort of work a way down that and uh build things up but it's again i guess like track craft you can look at the video of this look at the trailer you know what you're going to get it's a vr yeah. version of a, a medieval city builder and the i don't know the, the only other thing I, I will say with regards to the quest 3 kind of thing the exclusivity is if these levels get really really dense and there's a lot more stuff going on than in the first few levels that i've played which i i assume will be the case because it has combat later on as well which i've not seen yet where you have enemies that come on so you have to sort of uh use soldiers and, and stuff like this and maybe the cities get far more dense and that's why it's just taking a lot more processing power i don't know but um yeah yeah really really good i, I enjoyed my time with it so far anyway um, see the thing what's um very sorry very quickly just think what pops into my head straight away is while i'm watching the video it, can how far can you throw one of these townspeople <laughs> can you throw him off the island can you pick one up and like uh, yeet him for miles i didn't do that but i'm i need, <laughs> I need a bit more thing, what I into my brain well i i grabbed a bird and and threw yeah, that yeah threw that, that, yeah, that was cool <laughs> but yeah i don't know i didn't i never did because I, I i didn't want to i didn't want to hurt my little little fellas you know they're, they're, yeah. they're doing jobs for me maybe i don't know maybe they just pop back into existence i think because you can drop them i did drop one from quite a, quite high yeah. up just see what would happen and he sort of gets dazed and then just carries on with his job but yeah maybe just sort of re respawns is, is this hand tracking as well i can't remember did you say sorry is it hand no I, is it con I don't i only play with controllers now it looks like the right. kind of game that could be hand, hand tracking oh well they I'll see, then i was it. thinking again i wonder if i could flake one of them <laughs> and uh, see how far i'd go then yeah does hand tracking pick up flicks maybe it should it should in this maybe. <laughs> yeah. no, I, I look i'll show this to the missus because she's big into these city builder type games as you know she spends hundreds of thousands of hours playing like medieval dynasty and things like that and i said oh this was kind of interesting and she looked at the trailer and went nah it's not for me but i didn't realize it was as in depth as what like Gary showed me, you know, picking like even the stones up to give to the men to carry to to build the house and things like that. I didn't even notice that. So yeah, I think I'd be quite interested in this as well. Yeah, well, like, if you look at the trailer as well, as it goes on, it definitely gets more in depth. Like the early stages, mm. you, it's, it's almost like a very casual mobile game at the beginning. But then you look at the trailer <laughs> and it seems to go a little bit more in depth with all of this stuff. So I'm looking forward to getting a bit further on, definitely. So what is this multiplayer component? In the trailer, I'm seeing another a second person what are they doing well no so in this that that's your guide so you have somebody in these earlier levels you have a guide that tells you what to do and stuff so there's no multiplayer um in there really and and any like this other ship that comes to negotiate with you so you can trade and stuff and then they agree to take you onto this other island any npcs that appear like that they appear as if they're floating in the sky next to you as well so you can talk to them one on one one on one so as far as i know it's not got any multiplayer component to it um, okay yeah just looking at it it looked like that would be a second player and that's the that's the only reason yeah, why i yeah. asked the way they show it it's kind of weird because they got yeah, floating hands cool. as if they're holding them. motion controllers <laughs> yeah yeah they do yeah um but yeah it's it's a good game just looking at the video it, it looks like it almost had a problem recording it but you, you can see it sort of slicing off the edge as if there's sort of <laughs> the r word is happening and it's struggling to record no record the actual what that video. is so in the quest uh, video settings you have this um what's it called is where basically stability yeah. It. yeah it's, it's the stability oh, stuff so okay i've got it on the low setting but you still get that 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 slicing in um yeah. on the edge just to keep it stable at times so yeah, yeah. that's what that is all oh, right okay uh yeah so you I, I do recommend that now it's 22 pounds 99 on the quest store it's actually 32 pounds 99 i believe on the on steam so it's cheaper on the quest and uh it seems to do basically that it's basically the same game as far as i can tell and the graphics uh you know they're good enough and i don't know if you look at the pc trailer maybe there's more detail on certain things and stuff but the, the quest version for this type of game is is perfectly fine so yeah i recommend it um but then next on we've got lee uh resident evil 4 we discussed this last time uh roger yeah. and i we played the demo and you went around pd's house to play a bit more of the game is that right yeah um pd avid fan of the show listened to it and said look do you want to come around and try it and i went uh okay because i just heard like <laughs> you and rog slam it uh, for the r word and then i thought i don't really want to try it but i'll just go around anyway and try it and 
yeah, I thought it was really impressive. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. Now, we spoke about it before. People like Mac and people saying this is their game of the year. I think Beardo really loved it as well. And I, I was like, well, I don't understand how they can be enjoying it if this the, the R is that bad. But, yeah, while it is there on your hands and the guns, it's not as bad as what I have seen in other things. I don't know what you think to this as well, Steve, because you've got PSVR 2, right? Um, I but, played through yeah, this I yesterday, it was great. by the way. It's, it's, I really enjoyed it. I was quite surprised at how well it does actually look uh, on the PSVR 2 as well. When I got to a point where I first reached the cabins, I was quite impressed with the, the lighting, the shadows and all that. And yeah, and there are some points where I totally forget that it is, well, essentially a flat to VR port and I, and I start grabbing handles and I'm trying to open things with my hand instead of pressing A and things like that. But once I got my brain around that, I really liked it. I was quite surprised. I really wanted you guys to play it, and I, I kind of like mentioned it behind the scenes as well to just give it a go and see what you think, because it's not as bad as what I thought it was going to be. Um, I don't know what you think, Steve. What do you think about the reprojection on this? Um, well, it's terrible. Uh, so <laughs> really? I, I find it unplayable. Yep. <laughs> so, um... Oh, wow. <laughs> So I and, and I'm oh, a cool huge we'll edit this bit out. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the RE games in VR. I've I've played uh I think all of them except RE3 and it's just kind of on my backlog to play through. And I think they play great in VR. I think atmosphere is awesome. I think the RE engine that Catcom has made just makes along with the Prey Dogs mod on PC. So in this, and I just played through it yesterday because I saw it on the list, and, and I, I only played the demo. I, I am holding off to play the full game on PC when that full mod is made. Um, but playing through the demo on, on PSVR, and it's like, like, you know, in the video right now, you're just walking across the room. I could see the whole room and all the objects in the room blur as I walked. Yeah. Right. Like outside of yeah. outside of just my gun having reprojection, I could get past that. It's the whole world reprojects and has this like 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 I've been up all night drinking and double vision. And it's but if you stand still. Right. It is a beautiful world. And and they've done a fantastic job with the aesthetic. It's just it's it's hidden behind that which we say we're not going to talk about but are still talking about so uh I, i'll try not to talk about it anymore um but but i i really want to play this game with without that that element and and i'm i'm holding out for prey dog this is strange really because yeah. i mean i only time i saw it was on my weapons and i could see it and i couldn't see it when i was walking around but i could see it if i was moving left and right with the thumbstick it's kind of like a motion blur right so i could see that and i thought mm, can i get past that but if it was all the time for me personally i couldn't see it that all the time then, and I, then and I'm you're, definitely you're lucky up on reprojection you count your blessings yeah. that, that that you can't <laughs> see it uh because I, I sure as hell can and and the irony is you know way going back on the vr roundtable days one of the games i talked about the most one of my favorite all-time vr experiences was resident evil 7 and i know it played with, as a blurry reprojected mess too but back then in 2017 early 2017 when i played it like it wasn't that that didn't bother me yet i hadn't um gotten attuned to to higher fidelity so now that i am like like if you were to i think compare re4 on psvr2 against re7 on psvr1 the RE4 experience is way better. Motion controls, it looks better. The headset's better. It's a way better experience, I'm sure. Yet here I am just as an individual that loved the RE7 experience six, seven years ago. And now is like with the RE4 experience on PSVR 2, feeling like, hey, I, I want to wait to get it on PC. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, to I'm totally with you there. That's exactly my opinion of it. It's uh, I desperately want to play it, but I don't want to play it like this. Yeah. That said, and, I still think, you know, people that are will say it's the game of the year, like if if that element doesn't distract you, like it's not distracting Lee, like hmm. I could see why people love it. Like it, it's, it's there's a great game in there for oh, sure. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah, I agree. I think and and people have been complaining that the cuz I mentioned in the last podcast compared to Resident Evil Village how it's not quite got as it's not quite as VR in terms of what I've heard anyway from people talking about this is Resident Evil Village and like you still have that third person thing where he does the spin kick and stuff like that which really doesn't bother me that that side of thing I'm willing to accept all of that other stuff around this mm -hmm. it's just that 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 reprojection 
thing, uh, which we'll move on from now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so it is, it is going to be a great game. And I'm looking, I would like to play this. One of the things which we'll talk about later on, of course, with the Prey Dogs and Real Engine mod, uh, the, uh, the Universal mod, with I played quite a bit of Resident Evil 7 with that mod on PC, uh, the, the Resident Evil Prey Dog mod, and it is so good. And the performance <laughs> is so good as well. It's like incredible. If we could get just a native frame rate in what they've done here on the PSVR 2, and of course they're, they're dealing with limited hardware, hardware. We know that, and that's why they're having to lean on it. But if it's just like almost like a dream that if they, if they could do that, maybe on a PS5 Pro or something then that I think it really would be a fantastic game. Um, but yeah, and, and people will rightfully put it as uh, their game of the year. And it, it, I think there's you only need to go on the PSVR 2 subreddit to, to see that people yeah. absolutely love it on there anyway. So yeah. yeah. I mean, oh, they may even add it to the top three games of last year, but um, hold on, let me just go pen. Cross that on. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, uh, right, okay. <laughs> but no, I really enjoyed it. I, I thought it was cool. I mean, when I... The, the part it's one of them things where i'm still thinking back to it now and it's i don't get very wow moments and it's, it's probably just me and you guys probably don't think this but when i first i'll go around the corner and i can see like the town i can see the people and i can see all, all the fog and things like that and it just looked it looked great i mean i stood still anyway but i was like looking through binoculars <laughs> and that and yeah just, that gave me a bit of a, a, sh a shock i thought it, they've done a good a really good job of converting it to vr no, no, like, like, and so much so that i even bought the uh I bought the game, the remake on PC, and Gary very kindly gifted me the Quest version as well to play. So, yeah, the Thanks, the <laughs> they've done a good job with the I don't say color palette or the lighting palette that that the game you know that that just general aesthetic it translates really well to the PSVR 2's um, you know bright HDR you know dark uh, capabilities. This, uh, display there and, and and it does it looks fantastic in in that headset when you're standing still yeah yeah um yeah so that's resident evil 4 anyway let's get on to the next one which is what's this rog so do did, did we get sent a key for this one rat it plague hunter we did we got we got sent key we got sent a steam and a quest key for this um so this is basically i think i don't think on steam it's in early access is it on it, i don't know if it's on app lab on quest i can't honestly can't remember it's a it's by fountain game studio it's eight quid on quest eight pound fifty on steam um this is basically a slingshot game where you, you're on you're on an old sort of plate you're apparently some sort of alchemist on board some sort of plague ship and you're going around and you're slingshotting the infestation of rats. Um, and as far as I can tell, that's pretty mo much most of the game. Although you do come across puzzles what block your way, and you're, which aren't obvious at first, in all honesty. I, got, I actually got stuck, I think, on the probably the second room because I wasn't just wasn't expecting that there was supposed to be a puzzle to solve. Um, and this, this isn't a bad looking game. Um, the footage what's showing at the moment is from the Quest version, and it, look, it looks pretty much the same on PC and Quest. Mm. The problem is, it just seems very repetitive. There's, I don't know, I don't know what it is. It's one of those games where I don't want to sort of like hammer on it, but at the same time, I'm trying to find the good, you know, anything good, really good to say about it. It's not, you know, it looks nice enough. But all you're doing is teleporting around. There's no smooth locomotion at all. So it's, it's teleporting around to predetermined points, yeah. and you've got each. You go into a, you go into a room or you know a section of the ship. You have to clear out all the rats in that area. Then you move on to the next area. Um, the I got up to about the was it the third or fourth room, and I played through it on on PC first, and I was like, mm, I'm I'm not that keen really. But I thought, I'll, I'll take a look at the Quest one as well. So I had a look at it on Quest. The second time playing it, I was a bit more... My, my view my view on it was a bit more favourable. I, I knew more what I was what I was doing. Um, but I, I got up to maybe the third or fourth area and I <laughs> literally couldn't get past it. The thing is, not all the rats just come out at once. There's You get like cupboards or pots or whatever, different things you can smash and you'll that will unveil more of the rats then you can you can kill them off it got to the point where i was i was i don't know how many rats i was missing i just couldn't find them so i literally got stuck 
um, and, and couldn't progress any further. Um, there's there's something missing about it overall, though. There's it just feels. I don't know whether there should be some something else there, more in the way of narration and story, mm. as you know, just a, a voice maybe sort of narrate, narrating your way through it. Uh, I, I don't know. It's it, it is what you can it is what you can see on the screen. It, you know, it looks like a, a mobile kind of game, really, that you play on a, on a phone without any story or anything like that. And yeah, uh, I mean, like you say, the, the graphics actually don't look as bad as I was expecting when. Um, from, from the the graphics are fine, you know they've got that sort of unity sort of look to them, that unity yeah. cartoon look. It's a bit like but that yeah. Cookie game, isn't it? it? Looks kind of similar to that you know, graphics yeah. wise. I'm talking about, yeah. yeah. There's 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 nothing particularly wrong with it. It's just the the other problem I've got is as well with playing Asgard's Wrath two, and I don't know if, if you've got that far, but you get there's a slingshot in that later on, and the slingshot in that is just it's just better. Mm. You know, with this, the amount of times I'd go to reach for the slingshot and pull back, and it just missed. It missed the grab. You know, it felt like it was a. I was grabbing it seven or eight times out of ten, but those couple, that couple of times I was missing, it was just annoying. It just wasn't. I, I felt I had to be more slow and deliberate than I needed to be. Mm. Yeah. Whereas with Asgard's Wrath, I, that's got its own problem, but. In the fact that if you if you go too far, you, you can grab. You actually take the slingshot from <laughs> the hand you're holding it and into your other one. Um, but the actual mechanic of grabbing that, you know, it always felt like you was most of the time you was getting it. Where with this, it was, yeah, it's it need it needs some work. It, say it's an early access thing, so maybe they can Im improve on it. But it's it's just missing something. And maybe I've not got far enough. But like I say, the problem was I literally got stuck. I spent a good ten minutes at one point going around trying to find out where the the missing rats were, and I just, I just couldn't find them. And the, that's another annoying thing about it as well. The stuff you can smash, so you know, you, it'll be pots or whatever. You'll smash it, and maybe some rats will come out, or you'll hit a, a, a the cupboard, and that'll open up, and more rats will come out. You'll get very similar looking objects throughout the level, which have nothing to do with where anything's hidden, and the slingshot will just go straight through it. Ah, it's, it's, yeah. a, it's not an important object, so there's no collision there. Yeah, um, there's two points in it. I found two hidden teleport points, sort of embedded within the walls. And in one of them, I teleported into it. Was stood in literally inside the wall, looking out. So I shouldn't have been able to get there. I moved my head slightly and then fell through the world. It totally did a hubris on me. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, obviously some head collision knocked me through the floor, and, it, and I was falling through the world, and the ship was above me. And I went back in and repeated it. So that that is a, you know, there's some work to do on it, and. I don't know what else they can do. It's, it's you know, it's not bad. It's not a bad thing. It, it's done well enough, but what it does, I don't. I just don't think there's, as far as I've seen, there's just not enough variety. Yeah. So, so from what I can make out in the video, you, you're not just shooting rats. These are like personified, like little rat community, right? Like it's more of a yeah. slingshot <laughs> rat tattooy murder simulator, like. <laughs> Yeah, like, and that's an interesting thing. Like, oh my god, because <laughs> I, I see shooting rats, but these are like these is this little, little family of rats you're just needlessly murdering. Yeah, so they've, they've, they've got like hats on and stuff, and there's one of them with a uh, runs around with a pumpkin on its head, which reminded me of if anybody's ever played Ghost of a Tail, you could get a pumpkin hat on that. You you would play the you played Tilo the mouse who's a minstrel but in the one of the disguises you could get you could get a pumpkin and put it on your head and it just i always i just wondered if it was sort of like a homage to that but um <laughs> yeah look he's cute enough it's a nice enough thing it's just the game's just meh it's quill yeah, you're, yeah, even you're, I'm you're murdering quill sorry from for the rats <laughs> yeah yeah it's kind of like that isn't it and it's even got like a blood splatter effect when you hit them as well so yeah i, I kind of feel a bit for the rats on this mm. <laughs> yeah yeah, you're a sicko, Rog. Fancy playing this? <laughs> well, no, it's well the, 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 it. thing, the thing is that they have sort of infected you with something which sort of drains your life force. So they're, oh, they're right. not exactly, you know, entirely oh, right. good. All oh, right, you that's know, it. So. I kill them all. Whack them all out. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So that was Ratit Plague Hunter um, on Steam and Quest at the moment. So it's, it, did you say App Lab is that one? I think. I, I think. I think it is. Be, honestly, yeah. I've, I've forgotten. I think it is. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> All right. Well, um, the next one that we'll talk about is Rogue Stargun, which is also on App Lab as well. The demo is available now. 
Um, but the developer contacted me on this one just to um, give me access to the beta, which I think they're launching this pretty soon on App Lab anyway, the full game. Um, but this is like a, a space combat shooter and it's got the this aesthetic of uh, like a polygonal kind of graphics thing going on. And it serves the purpose, I guess, the graphics, I would say, in certain sections. There's something I'll, I'll mention a little bit later on. But this uses a virtual HOTAS and it's a, a, a combat game of the like of something like X-Wing or TIE Fighter back in the day. And the reason I say that is because it's not just dogfighting all the time. You've also got these various kinds of missions where you do sort of bombing runs and stuff like that. And presumably, like later on, I'm only on mission four at the moment, but later on, I presume you'll get things like escort missions and the usual things that you'll get in TIE Fighter and those kinds of games. And I think that is worth saying on its own because there's a lot of more basic sort of indie games which do concentrate literally on just dogfighting. You're in a, in a cockpit, you're flying around, and you're just doing dogfighting all the time. But this does this game does mix things up, have, has a variety of different missions, has unlockables that you do as well. It uses a virtual HOTAS, which is something that... I, I, mm. I was talking to you, Lee, actually, about this, because some people really, really love virtual HOTAS sticks and won't play any game like cockpit based game if they don't have virtual hotel sticks and others really dislike them i remember when no man's sky first came out and i sort of forced myself to play it because it had virtual hotels in uh vr but what yeah. i wanted is just to fly that ship with thumbsticks i always wanted to just just do that because it's more precise to me um but they don't really allow that and so People that really like virtual HOTAS sticks, virtual flight sticks and stuff like that are going to get on well with this. And the other aspect that, that that opens up in games like this is that you can do certain other things in the cockpit. In this one, for example, you can, if you get hit too many times, you'll have a fire breakout in the cockpit and you grab a fire extinguisher and you have to manually sort of put out the fire in, in the cockpit. You also have these things where if you destroy a weapons container in any mission, then you'll get these blocks, which you can then pick up in the cockpit, place them into a receptacle, and then you'll get this weapon upgrade in your ship as well. All these other things that you can do to manipulate inside the cockpit. So I like that side. The only aspect which I, I've always struggled with is the virtual HOTAS, the virtual flight stick, because I just don't find them as, as precise. But I guess it's a necessity to have that in, in some ways in order to allow you to have hand presence and, and do all these other things. So... I just want to make that clear because some people really dislike it some people love it so for the people that love it you're gonna you're gonna love this um but it's got the variety of missions is quite interesting as well so you start off and you you go through a couple of tutorial missions then you have like a, a dog fighting section in space but then you've also got surface missions as well which is what i'm showing here in, in this video this is a bombing run actually so i had to bomb this base and then uh, you know, you do a little bit dog fighting in this as well, and the mission progresses. So, I think this is by a single developer who started making this during COVID, apparently three years ago, and they contacted me to to sort of allow me access to this this beta branch just to see what I think. And I've given given a little bit of feedback. There were a few things that I wasn't too sure about. Um, but overall, I think they've done a pretty good job on this. It's got that very single dev indie vibe about it. It's it's you can tell that it's made on a budget, you know, and and that's okay. I think it's doing enough variety. It's doing enough different things to elevate it beyond what you would expect from just like your standard. You know, you get in a cockpit, you shoot some enemies down, and that's it. You've got a little bit of variety in this, which um, hopefully, as it progresses through, you get more of that as well. So I I'm enjoying my time with it. The one thing I'll say on the graphics, I think it's perfectly fine. Like the 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 enemy ships look good in that polygonal kind of aesthetic. The the cockpit looks. Good good as well but as you can see on this video the landscape of the planet it's just really barren really it's almost do you remember that game cybermorph on the jaguar <laughs> it's a bit <laughs> like you're flying around just a little bit of a there's not a lot going on that's what i'll say but the graphics on the ships you can see is as you're flying around even though they're sort of low poly ships they look really good so there's there's something to be said for that but it's just like the landscape of the planets and stuff um 
detracts maybe a little bit but it's it's not the end of the world or anything like that so um yeah and uh, i'm always going to be a little bit more um i guess I'll, I'll give a little bit more wiggle room to an, an indie dev a solo dev that is trying to do something like this because at the same time cockpit based games i don't know if there's a huge amount of those on the quest and this is a standalone this is not a pc title this is a quest game so you've got certain uh cockpit based games you've got warplanes you've got ultra wings 2 and stuff like that you've got um if you want racing you've got grid grid legends is it um on there as well but i think it's always good just to have like a space combat uh, cockpit based game uh, for those that want to play those kinds of things on a standalone platform and this is offering that and it's doing it in pretty, a pretty good way so yeah i was quite impressed with this i was just having i mean it didn't really look like this but the low, pol low polygonal sort of style i just want namco to sort of reimagine star is it star blade <laughs> if you remember that in the arcades yeah 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 it was the these i remember they used to have the um, big I can't remember if we were like four or six players even. They used to have a massive, massive, it was almost an enclosed cabinet type thing in, at Meadow Hall or big sort of place you walked into, massive long bench. And you all sat down and there's huge, obviously huge projector screen. And it was a, it was an on rails polygonal sort of shooter. But I don't know, I just thought of that for some bizarre reason. Yeah, yeah, it's got, yeah, I guess it's sort of got that kind of vibe about it. And I think what it is because i mentioned x-wing and tie fighter there at the beginning i think some of the missions do they're a little bit reminiscent of that and that's the thing i think a lot of that those games or as good as they were back in the day they were pretty basic in terms of missions but they relied a lot on there was a story that was very good in tie fighter as well but also they had the ip you know i mean if this game just it was exactly the same but had that kind of star wars ip i think people would be a <laughs> far more interested in it um but but of course they can't do that so i think it's, it's doing a, a really good job for what it's trying to do anyway um yeah one, one to look out for um i don't know the price on this yet i think they are, the developers in the process of putting up um details on their website with a press pack of sort of the uh, the the release date and stuff like that so hopefully we'll get more information on it but it's just i just wanted to mention it just one to look out for for anybody that's not aware of it anyway yeah but demo available anyway yes yeah uh okay so that's pretty much everything we've been playing this week so let's go on to some just a couple of quick news stories first one is the sony at ces um, I think they announced this or, or at the same time as CES anyway. Uh, they announced a standalone XR2 Plus Gen 2 headset, uh, which is really, it's an enterprise headset. So it's nothing yeah. to do with gaming or anything like that. It's really designed for uh, computer-aided design um, and art and those kinds of use cases. But it has got sort of dual OLED micro displays, uses pancake lenses, uh, 4K per eye resolution and it's got these odd controllers as well which are really best but they've been designed specifically for the use case that it's aiming at which is computer aided design so these are not game controllers or anything like that but it's an interesting little development because we weren't really expecting sony to do something like this necessarily but i would assume that although it's a different area you know this is sony it's not necessarily the the playstation division of sony or anything like that i assume that they're all collaborating on the same kinds of technology so uh the one thing that stuck out to me on this is it looks very much like a lynx r1 which uh, yeah i was going to say that <laughs> <laughs> very much so yeah um but yeah it's got the xr2 plus gen 2 chip in there as well which is the updated version of the one that's in the quest 3 so it's about 20 percent gpu uh fa faster on the gpu and about 15 oh no maybe 15 percent on the gpu 20 percent on the cpu but it's a like a slightly upgraded version of what's in the quest 3 anyway uh yeah interesting developments because we don't know where this might lead in the future for the development of future playstation headsets yeah. as well so um yeah. I, mean, I mean absolutely worth pointing out that this is nothing to do with gaming whatsoever i've, no. I've seen people moaning and arguing about how you're supposed to play stuff already on <laughs> yeah. you know on various forms it's like this is not aimed at you i think there's reports saying that this isn't even won't even be available to consumers so it's a you know it's an enterprise aimed headset it's you know yeah although it was pointed out that I know somebody reported that this is the same displays in here that are going into the um, into that into the Apple headset. 
Yeah, I think I think people are just making that assumption based on the fact there aren't too mm. many of those micro OLED displays with that 4K resolution. So they, they, they've yeah. got to be sourcing them from the same place as Apple, I believe. Um, mm. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's got pretty much the same display system as the Apple headset Vision Pro, I, I believe. So yeah, um, it, I think it's interesting just see the the fact that because in the future you never you never know. Like I could. Sony maybe announced some kind of Vita standalone type of uh, <laughs> foray into VR and um, rather than relying on, on the console, have their own sort of standalone thing. Cause that, to me, that makes a lot of sense for PlayStation, but it, it, obviously that's a long way off, even if they were ever going to consider that. But um, yeah. Lee, you got any thoughts on this at all? I think it's good to have things like that. Definitely. I can see the advantages after watching that video. Um, how handy it would be to have something, especially, I mean, that was like the video was showing you like Formula One and things like that. If people haven't are watching it on the YouTube, it was showing them making a steering wheel and putting it inside the car and then they're virtually sitting in the cockpit and seeing how it, it all handles. Yeah, I, I quite like the idea of that because these little things do tend to trickle down into consumer headsets, don't they, eventually? Mm. So maybe we'll see something, maybe some hybrid Sony thing. That'd be kind of cool in the future, something like that. But yeah, I can see the definitely see the benefit side of it. Yeah. What about you, Steve? What do you think? About the same as, as you all. Uh, I think the Siemens partnership here, you know, I, I, and I know Siemens uh, in the workspace that I work in dealing with industrial manufacturing and control systems, it, it's a big player globally. And I know they do lots of other things, but anything in this space, I've not heard of Siemens being involved before. So that that's unique. Uh, but, you know, kind of, counter that this is kind of the same theme though we've seen microsoft hololens and we you know it seems like every nine months or so you know some major manufacturer of, of, of electronics comes out with some enterprise vr mr component yeah. and and we get mm -hmm. you know we we're like yeah yeah that's good and and i'd rather these products exist and, and be worth making for these companies that than not but at the same time, it, it just kind of like, okay, yeah, there'll be some people out there maybe using this to design their their race, their F1 steering wheel or whatever that, that was shown in the video. But, hmm. you know, it's like, I don't know, it just seems like a way for, for, for them to, um, for a company like Sony to, to keep their, their toe in the water, you know, rather than be a company that, that doesn't have their toe in the water and if you know the the industry were to, to break and, and explode overnight you know you, you're, you're better off having your toe in the water because then you can adapt quicker yeah right and and it, this it kind of feels like that to me that it's it's more strategic keeping themselves plugged in somewhat and and really nothing much more than that hmm. psvr2 almost feels like that at times yeah so yeah i was thinking the same thing yeah i feel, I feel yeah because we don't know what's going to happen over the next year with the PSVR 2 anyway, and hopefully we'll get some announcements and stuff and we'll see what happens. But it does feel like they're, they're trying to keep their hand in that space. Because at the same time, I do think the, that is almost a, a, a selling point of a PS5 anyway, just to have that ability for people that, that look at the two consoles and just think maybe... maybe I might want to get into VR at some point in the future, so they've got that mm -hmm. option. So I think that's there but at the moment it it doesn't feel the the playstation vr2 is doing too much and i uh i feel like i'm if they don't announce something first party or something bigger in the next six months or so i'm probably gonna sell mine anyway um and maybe pick one up if they do something else because I'm not using it. That's the truth about yeah. the PSVR 2. I'm just not really using it at the moment. Well, I feel a little bit guilty now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I assume it was yeah. it was a return. You've got a, a two-year yeah. return policy, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, so... But, but yeah, you're right. You're right what you're saying, though. Because, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking, like, if only they could really... I miss if only... Um, two decent games a month, something like that, something really good high-end is to just keep people interested and keep people wanting to, to play it, but they just don't seem to be doing that at the minute. The, the, not from what I can see. 
Yeah, it's a lot of quest ports. It's a quest port. Yeah, the problem is, is the player like base. VR stuff. It's the player base. They can't justify the, the investment costs, and that, that's what it comes yeah. down to. And I don't blame... It, it's They're in a very difficult position, I, I honestly believe, because they've... My opinion is that what happened with the PSVR 2 is that it was in research and development for many, many years ago. And then Jim Ryan came on, who has had quotes in the past where he's really not been a fan of VR. He's mentioned several things before he took over. And when he came on board, he had a decision to make whether, you know, we either cancel the PSVR 2 project or let it roll and, and release it. And I believe that he said we'll release it and maybe capitalize on 30 percent profit from all the indie developers that are going to port their games over to that platform and maybe that will cover the research and development costs the 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 issue is i don't believe that jim ryan put in enough money into or investment into the psvr2 um in terms of first party and stuff like that and at the same time i think there's got to be an astrobot there's got to be that in the work surely that is it's not just a no-brainer. It's like it's so assumed that yeah. that's got to be coming. Yeah. Because they do that in all all of their new technology. Yeah. They, they did it with the PS5. They do it with the original PSVR. It's got to be coming, that one has. But now Jim Ryan's left, and we've got to see what happens. But it's too late to really get that. that it's a long road to getting these, these games built for the PSVR 2. And... I don't know. I think it's in a tough spot. And it, part of me does, the cynical part of me does really think that they're relying on indie devs to port their games over and just take 30% of that. And that's enough for them. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. The, I mean, the, the, there's always the argument from the sort of like the, the, the hardcore PSVR 2 crowd of, yeah, but look, Sony put, invest, you know, gave money to Capcom to do Resident Evil and, you know, they did Gran Turismo and everything. That's been the argument for the past year. At the end of this year, that's going to be the same argument. It's we've got Resident Evil, we've got Gran Turismo, and then the year after that, it's going to be the same. I just don't see anything new coming. These are like multi-million selling games anyway, aren't they? So they're, they're yeah. already counting on that audience who's picked a PSVR 2 up to want to play those or, or buy them on, on yeah. PSVR 2 as well because they know they're going to get the money for them. Yeah. It, it kind of feels like the, 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 the software base for PSVR 2 will peter out much more rapidly than, than it did for PSVR. Because, the, the, I mean, the, the final two years of PS, original PSVR, it was a drought. Yeah. And I don't think anybody would argue for that. No matter, you know, even if you're the diehard PSVR guys were, were desperate for new games. And um, I, th I think it's going to end... I think this, unless something drastic happens, it's going to end up in that situation a hell of a lot quicker. But then do you think the there'll original. be a PSVR 3? Or do you think they'll just think, you know what, that's it, we've, we've tried, we've had enough now. It and um, who control, knows what? I guess he's, he's. Well, I guess yeah. And who knows what Apple's doing and, and Meta's doing at the time? But it'd be a shame because you've, you've got all these amazing IPs for Sony, and you, like you say, Rog, yeah. with Astrobot. I mean, we all keep yeah. saying it. Like everyone said on Twitter, hopefully we'll get Astrobot soon. You just think, well, we all know how good it would do and how well it'd be be received. But does Sony know that? I'd have put I'd have put money on an Astrobot, even if it was just a port of the first one. Yeah. I would absolutely positive that there'd be an Astrobot game. I'd have put money on them porting that wipe putting Wipeout Omega over as well, and maybe stuff like Blood and Truth, and you know, and it's there's nothing. Mm. It's surprising. I, uh, yeah, a a year ago I would not have said any of the things that we've just said, and and I agree with you guys. It's like they they had a lot of buzz and and. It's just, it's faded so fast. And for it to be this way after a year or so is, is, is kind of, it's hard to say, like, well, I forgot who, which one of y'all just said, you know, will there be a PS VR three? And, and if I had to bet today, I'd say no, like, you know, yeah, it was you Lee, yeah. sorry. And I, I, I'd say, no, I don't think there's going to be a PS VR three, the way this is going, you know, at least not in, in a sequential you know, immediate release at the end of the PSVR 2's life. Now, I could be wrong. Maybe they have a big push planned. You know, I don't work for Sony, but it it, it doesn't it doesn't seem like it's trending in the way that I'd want it to trend. I think yeah. the the issue is as well that the Sony and not Meta. They the Meta are pu pushing all this money in hoping to recoup it in 10 years time sony don't do that with psvr2 they don't do it with the original psvr they need to make money on this generation that's the difficulty they're in they're stuck in a really difficult position because they've not got enough uh psvr2s that have sold in order to justify the investment in games and stuff 
So uh, they, they need to make money. They need to make PSVR 2 profitable this generation. They're not looking to, okay, we'll lose money on PSVR 2. We'll recoup it in PSVR 4, PSVR 5. That's the way Meta are thinking, and that's not the way Sony will think. Um, but to be at least to, in, in PlayStation format, I mean, yeah, yeah, that's that's very clear. But but at the same time, we're in in year eight of Meta's VR product lineup, so they're 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 coming up on that ten year, you know, and um, you know, that script's going to have to flip for them too eventually. Yeah, I think it, I think it is ten years. I think I saw it on Twitter. Right, it's ten years ago since Zuckerberg bought Quest. I think I saw that on Twitter earlier on today. It was, and I was, well, was it was it last year, twenty fourteen? I think. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Was it? Yeah, we. I think we said we did what an episode was it last year when we said it was like ten years since the Rift came out. Rift Kickstarter, I think it was, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, Rift yeah. Kickstarter. Right, yeah. yeah, was that last year? Uh, twenty twenty two. Yeah, that would have been twenty 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 two. Was that? Was yeah. It? yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I only so, yeah, say I mean, year eight from 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 the release of the CV one. Mm. Mm. Yeah, but. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens uh, with both. The thing is, because people, somebody put up on the PSVR subreddit the other day about how Meta have lost all of this money uh, with their Reality Labs. And the difference is that Reality Labs is for everything. It's for VR, it's for it's for AR, future AR glasses yeah. and all of these yeah. other things, which if they do take off, then that's when they're going to make all of their money back. And that's the gamble yeah. that they're making at the moment. So... People keep saying, oh, they've lost this money, they've lost that money. It's like, no, they've spent that money on research and development. Yeah. It's like, how do you expect these products to, you know, eventually arrive in our hands? It's like, exactly, yeah, yeah. they've got to spend the money for it to actually happen. I think it was like something like 24 billion or something. Or I may, I may wow. be wrong. I'd have to uh, double check that one. But I know it was, a, you know, a quite high amount of money, but yeah. Which dead class is investment, not not in losses. Yeah. It's yeah, that's that's yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. So it makes the Quest Three seem pretty cheap, really. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when you think about that, um, yeah. But to be honest, Microsoft are not. Uh, <laughs> they've decided to take a bit of a step away as well. So this next news story, we've got the Microsoft. So originally it was reported that uh, Microsoft is shutting down Windows Mixed Reality in late 2024, but then upload. VR reached out to them and they clarified with a, a little quote here. I'll just go through this. Um, so Microsoft said back to upload VR in response to this. As of November the 1st, 2026 for consumers and November the 1st, 2027 for commercial customers, Windows Mixed Reality will no longer be available for download via the Mixed Reality Portal app, Windows Mixed Reality for Steam VR and Steam VR Beta, and we will discontinue support. Existing Windows Mixed Reality devices will continue to work with Steam until users upgrade to a version of Windows that does not include Windows Mixed Reality. So it seems, I think the clarification is that it's not necessarily like late 2024 when they're shutting down Windows Mixed Reality. It's going to be close to 2026 when a version of Windows will be released, which will deprecate the, the support for it on then. But as long as you don't update to that version of Windows, then you can still use your Windows Mixed Reality devices like the HP Reverb G2 or whatever, you know, um, going beyond that. So you've got a couple of years, at least it seems, and then beyond that, if you decide not to upgrade Windows. So, you know, they're giving it a fair bit of notice. But yeah, I mean, it's it's sad. What what do you guys think, uh, Rog? What, what's your thoughts on this? Yeah, it's sort of, on one side you sort of think this isn't good. On the other side, I sort of think it's not really much of a loss. Yeah, yeah. It's like who you know who really, really likes Windows MR. It, it's yeah. It's the reverb too. I, mean, I think that's what it comes. It's that, yeah. that 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 yeah. That is the thing. That is the only that is the only downside. The people who still use a yeah a, a G two, and that aside, you know, in a couple of years, who's going to be using one anyway? Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah. I, I I echo with Rog really, really, where he's just said there. Uh, sorry, someone's knocking on the door. Just bear me one sec. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, Steve, what do you think of this? I, I, again, I I mostly agree with you guys. It's it's not. I don't think it's going to have a lasting impact on co uh, any consumers using the products today, because like I said, they're likely to upgrade by this time rolls around. And if for some reason they're too stubborn to upgrade, they just don't update Windows. The more 
telling thing here is is that really this is marking the death of Microsoft's investment into consumer VR at, at least for now, right? Because mm-hmm. they're they're not they're not saying that hey we're 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 ending support for for these current products, which any company has to eventually stop supporting, right? Because it just stops making sense to always support till the end of time. Um, yeah. They're saying Windows MR is shutting down, so it's there's not there's got they're they're not clearly they're not working with any um manufacturers for any future uh windows mr headsets it's just it's it's done so it's them pulling the plug and didn't they recently and and kind of announced that that uh hololens is also kind of on the back burner uh i, I want to say i saw that somewhere don't quote me if i'm if i'm crazy in the moment but in the end this is ultimately signaling that that microsoft's taking a step back yeah uh, either that or let me be ultra optimistic for once let me say maybe they're shutting down the windows mixed reality side of things is that that branch that 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 branch of their investment in vr kind of technology because the mr brand the mixed reality brand is sort of been tainted and, and changed by other companies i feel um, you've got Quest that use mixed reality in a completely different term. Maybe they're deprecating that side of things to launch something completely different in in terms of VR. That's me being ultra optimistic. I don't believe that. But, <laughs> emphasis, know, it, it, emphasis on the ultra. You know, they could just say, <laughs> "Hey, we're we're rebranding Wix w- Windows Mixed Reality to Windows whatever." Right? That's not. It's not a rebranding. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Win- Windows Spatial Computing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's that. Let's go on to a few topics of the show anyway. So the the main one that we wanted to get into and stuff that we've been experimenting with. So on the on New Year's Eve, was it? Uh, Prey Dog yeah. released the Unreal Engine Universal VR Injector Mod, um, which allows you to play any Unreal Engine game from sort of 4.8 to an Unreal Engine 5 game in VR to varying degrees of success. And we've been experimenting with that. I think we've all played a fair, well, a little bit at least of these different kinds of games within the UE VR mod. And yeah. I've got, I just want to make it, before we start, let's give our specs out on the PCs that we've been trying this on. So I've got a uh, an RTX 3080 pc rog what you're on a 4070 now is that right i'm on, I'm on a 4070 ti with an old uh 8700k intel overclock cpu which is still doing me all right but definitely needs upgrading yeah and lee you're on a yeah third... 3060 yeah so 3060, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely go into that when we start talking but yeah i think <laughs> my processor is only like a ryzen 5 3600 or i, I can't remember entirely it's, it's just basically a 1080p medium to low gaming pc so yeah and then we've got steve on a 4090 i don't know what process you running steve so i i've i feel shame and guilt here you know i feel like the spoiled <laughs> brat uh <laughs> i work i work really hard for my toys you all um i have a thir- this is why we needed you one though <laughs> <laughs> this is a, i have a 13900 k um and a uh, 4090 yeah, so we've got the full spectrum here, really. Anyway, haven't yeah. we? So we can talk about this from di- different ways. Um, I'm. I'll quickly go first on on one of the things that I played. I just want to quickly mention Abzu VR. Um, Abzu, not VR. It's a flat game, of course. But I went in and played through this game in a couple of sittings in using the UE VR mod and. It's an incredible experience. It is so good. Now, I've never played this game. I picked it up on sale. It was only £3.74 on the Steam sale. So I thought this is one that people are recommending. And it really does work well. There's a few little things that you need to tinker with. Not that much, really. And you can get a really great experience. There's a couple of issues that I experienced. um, Probably, well, one of the issues is the you have these shoals of fish that that will move past you. And the culling... It, it's a little bit too early so you'll see the fish disappear and you can probably see it on the video in places as well um, yeah. so that's a little bit distracting in certain areas not in every area because you're not really focused on on those anyway in a lot of this and Abzu is really like a, an experience really I mean I, 
is it a game? I, I It's got little puzzle elements here and there, I suppose, but there's not really too much. You just go through this sort of experience. But it's so good, yeah. so good in VR. Um, it is. I, I played through this one, I think, probably when it launched. Um, and I, I've played through it on PC. And I think I've played through it on PS4 as well, maybe. Mm. Um, it's. I really, I really love this game. It, it's almost like the the swimming equip. Well, you know, you get like walking, so called walking simulators, don't yeah. you? Yeah. This is sort of maybe sort of a swimming, you know, simulator as opposed to a walking simulator. Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it, it's a bit more than that, but maybe ish. But it, yeah. Yeah, it's got some puzzles that you have to do, but there, there's nothing that is really taxing. Um, no. But, yeah, I mean, if you have this mod in you, and my 3080 handled this really well. Performance was really good. It looked really sharp. Um, so I'm, I'm pointing this out as a really good experience on this mod, first of all, because I, I, you know, you couldn't get me off this game when I was in the midst of it. I, I absolutely loved it. The only other thing I'll mention, a slight issue, was the there was a, a shader a little bit later on, and only on certain levels, there was a couple of levels where things were meshing quite right between the two eyes um but mm. it was only in certain places and only in a couple of levels so i could have probably tweaked things and got things sorted out to resolve that anyway but it was such a minor issue that i just decided to to play through those sections anyway yeah. um but yeah highly recommended if, if you're using this um that's sort of a highlight of this mod for me but it, i'll go over to you know steve what, what have you been playing on this i don't think we spoke about this yet oh geez i've 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 listed 16 titles that i've tried anywhere from seven hours wow. to an hour or so um at lies of p grounded ff7 crisis core Sackboy, crash bandicoot 4 edith finch scorn hogwarts eternal um stray tales of arise trails of mana dragon quest 11 scarlet nexus gravel uh, Dark Pictures, Dark Pictures Anthology, Callisto Protocol, and Life is Strange: True Colors. Uh, some of these I already owned. Uh, and that's kind of the beauty of this. And 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 then I did do some feasting on the Steam Winter Sale in anticipation of of this tool coming <laughs> out. So I've got a lot, and I still have some, you know, a good handful of four or five, six titles still to try. Um, I think it might be good though to kind of back up rather than be game specific and, and discuss. It itself so you know we we have a tendency of saying ue vr mod uh but it's really more of a tool and and it's different than a, yeah. a traditional mod when, when you have a mod for a game like the fantastic alien isolation mod from from way back in the past is is the the whoever creates the mod you know you you usually install it or, or copy files into the games directory and the person who created the mod has kind of made all the decisions for you you don't have to do anything um other than install the mod the the uevr injector is more of a tool it doesn't install to any game you it injects itself after the game is already running and and it's pretty intuitive but you to get the best experience you do kind of have to tinker a a little bit um now the team that working on it and, and helping prey dog they've they've come up with this profile system so for a game like returnal that would have a lot of tinkering to get it set up in first person and and to use a gun um in in sort of a we'll just say motion controller gun support um you can just download a profile and you're still got to click a few clicks to kind of get things set up so it's not a a run and go in the traditional mod sense but that said even though it's a tool it's still pretty easy to use if you've used any of the luke ross mods you know you're kind of used to having this overlay that you can engage in game by by double clicking thumbsticks and um you know, so um, Gary, you mentioned in Abzu, I've, I've not played that one, that you had some shader issues in, in some parts. And, and this is, is sort of a problem of, of injecting and, and having a tool like this is that, um, you know, Prey Dog has coded in these different rendering modes. And, you know, so normally like in my workflow, if I start a game that I haven't played and, and I start seeing those differences in the shaders uh, between left eye right eye then I'll, I'll i'll pull the overlay up and then change the rendering mode and in most cases that will squash any of that stuff there there are three rendering modes and, and really only the first two um i think in most cases is all you'll need to use the, the native stereo and then the synced sequential um so so yeah i just wanted to give a for anyone listening that that hasn't 
kind of doesn't really, you know, know what this is or, or understands how it works. It, it is some additional friction to, to get into a world, but it's, it's pretty easy and you don't have to have a degree in computer science, you know, to use this tool. They've, they've, they've made it about as easy as they could while also universally supporting a, a game engine such as Unreal. Yeah, the, I think the friction is worth mentioning because, yes, it's it's easy enough to use, and if you've used mods or anything like that before, it, it's not difficult at all. But that extra layer of having to do something else, it has actually, it has actually pushed me off onto playing something else, um, rather than jumping, you know, dropping into the into, you know, a UEVR game, which I should have really been doing more of. Given we're gonna given we going to talk about it on the podcast it was just thought of oh but i've got to do that and i i, I sort of kept veering away and going for the easier option mm. it may be um, you got to get some familiarity think, like once you get second nature yeah. you'll, you'll be you'll move quicker through it um yeah I, th I think the other thing is as well is is the mixed you know the mixed experience i've had because i've i've had stuff what's just run like utter trash and i've had some stuff what's you know, run absolutely amazingly. Um, like, where is it? One of the games what Alex mentioned um, on his Christmas buying list was, uh, it's just like an arcade rally game called Gravel. And um, the I'll just pop the video up here. And this this video, I mean, if you look at it, the frame pacing is entirely correct. Mm. And it's because I was playing this using the UEVR mod um, at 120 frames a second and recording 1080p 60 frames a second video. Hmm. And that is that is singularly the best experience I've had in UEVR performance-wise on my system. Um, I was trying. I can't, that there was a game you meant something you mentioned, Lee, and I forgot the name of it when we were talking about it on Discord again the other day. It's some sort of Bioshocky looking oh, the, game. Um, is it close to the sun? That's the one, close to the sun, and. Like in that one, for example, that was a bit of a mixed bag. It was performance was good enough on mine that I could have played it, but it, I could I could see it wasn't holding the full frame rate properly. And that one, like some other games as well, because you're taking a, in a game what was designed for flat, it's the camera sometimes will do like you'll get like panning motions in cutscenes and things like that. And in that uh, and in that um, what was it? Close to the sun yeah um it was the the camera angle sometimes to be looking down at the character in the cut scene as well as doing the slow pan and everything and although i didn't get motion sick within two minutes of playing that i was dizzy i was literally getting dizzy and it's like whoa this is a bit of a weird one because normally i'm either fine or i can feel like this is going to make me feel ill where with it this was felt like a new experience was oh i don't know my sense of up isn't exactly where it should be um so it's uh, it's been a bit of a mixed bag, sort of both performance wise and sort of comfort wise as well. So yeah, if you don't have a lot of experience playing a modded titles, like that is a thing. Jarring mm. camera transitions, dealing with the inevitable calling uh, uh, issues that will kind of seem janky and can be immersion breaking. Um, the the upside and and most of what's in my list for me has been third. Uh, person perspective titles and I'm playing with a gamepad. Um, and mm. I, I think, you know, I, I, you know, I, I mentioned my, my highly spec PC and, and my being fortunate. Um, and I think I've mentioned on the past that I have a, a very high end home theater kind of behind me, um, the, across on the other side of this wall for, for those that can see the screen. And, um, so I I was I was the home theater of the month for for a publication so it's it's a serious hobby of mine and and I say all that to say because I have a fantastic flat gaming equipment and 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 set up in my home and I've been saving for example Lies of P which is a game I've been very excited about I've been saving it for this UEVR mod because I'd rather play it in my Quest 3 from that perspective than my really, really nice home theater. So I think having, if you don't think of it, and this is this is a big polarizing conversation for a lot of people in the VR community, is there is this adamant feeling that, that VR is only valuable from a first person perspective with motion controllers. 
And I think depending on the game, right, that is the preferred way. But that is not to say that there isn't value in playing a game with a gamepad like Lies of P and getting it from that spatial, three-dimensional perspective, yeah. fully field of view uh, coverage for the most part. And, 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 and as I say, right, with all my expensive toys, right, I would rather play these games like Lies of P and Hogwarts and Returnal this way with this injector tool rather than on my 138 inch you know custom high-end home theater and so i i think that's that's kind of the big takeaway i think that i, I want to leave here is that um this is a fantastic way to experience these games even if it isn't in the mindset of what vr is for a lot of people well that's that's what um even if you don't consider it necessarily like true vr which we had a lot of comments on and stuff even yeah. if you don't consider it that it's one more thing you can do with a headset it, like a completely separate thing don't consider it vr then just consider it another thing that you can do with these vr headsets and i think that's enough the interesting thing steve i was going to ask you like with returnal did you play that third person with the gamepad as well or did you go through the steps to get motion controllers so, so i downloaded the profile and i and i started with motion controllers and and i had already experienced six seven titles before before I, I gave this one a go i wanted to get familiar with the tool and and stuff before i started futzing with you know trying to emulate six doff elements from from a motion controller um so in Returnal, it works like and it it you it's like people say, it doesn't feel quite like a native six doff, you know, gunplay. It's more of a, feels more like a old House of the Dead light gun type, type, you know, uh, element to it. Uh, but in that that particular game, I, I found it, even though the gun part of it worked fine and it felt good, uh, what happens is as you're wiggling your wrist and, and, and aiming the gun, the HUD moves, right? Because that's what the injector is doing. It's actually emulating in a way like if you imagine moving your thumbstick you right in a first person game and so the hud moves around with it so it, it almost behaves like your entire the hud for the game is almost like one giant rectangle somewhat moving around and i found that myself i found that very distracting um so i then you know kind of reset the camera profile and everything and went to it more to a default gamepad third person and i like the game a lot that way and, and I had played yeah, it but, on PS5, and I, I couldn't get into the game. Like, there was something about it. Like, I see why people liked it, but it just it wasn't grabbing me. But then in VR, I, I had to, like, make myself stop and move on to another title. All right. So well, uh, that's interesting. The, sorry, Gary, go on. Well, no, I was just going to say, because I, I was um, thinking just the limited games that I've played in it so far, my my take is very similar that I, I feel like I would rather play on gamepad and just have this as a an extra thing I can do in in my VR headset rather than get, you know, all the motion controls working perfectly and all these other things because I, I feel like there's you can go through those hoops and do all of that stuff and it would be great. But I would need a game and if there was a game that I was absolutely desperate to play in the most immersive way possible and I would I would try my very best to make it motion controllers I would try to do all of that stuff like for example if No Man's Sky had never been released in VR and it was an unreal game I would have been going through the hoops of really tinkering spending hours and hours to get that game running but it's one of my favorite games I don't feel the need to do that for every game that I play with this mod. That's the difference. And I'm happy just to get the experience with a gamepad in a lot of these games anyway. Take away a bit of the junk and just the experience being in that world. I think that's a lot of it for me. I think I'd agree with that. It's, yeah, I'd, I'd rather have it working well than sort of, yeah, get those motion control in, controls in and have things start going a bit wonky. Um, it, I think it is worth addressing the whole... The whole thing with people claiming there's now like 11,000 brand new Unreal Engine games that everybody can now play. Um, there's, there's, there might be. It's been repeated a lot. <laughs> the, the problem is there might be that many games out there, but A, not all of them are going to work or work well at least. And then you've got the whole thing of it's like it's going to be vastly dependent on the spec of your PC. Is, this is 
I don't think the the UEVR mod is is not a reason for people to suddenly run out and buy a Quest and then just buy a quote gaming PC, you know, and because the this whole thing of there's now thousands of games to play it's it it's misleading from i think it's very misleading mm, yeah. um to to you know to people who really don't understand what's going off you know if, if you're not a pc gamer and you just see like oh there's now thousands of games i can play in vr i'll get into vr now i think you're going to have a rough time well i think yeah. it can be a you know like like we were talking earlier on on psvr it's like it can make someone choose to buy a ps5 knowing that that VR options available to them. And if you, if you take a similar rationale here, it's like, okay, someone that's already kind of thinking about VR and is interested in picking up a quest and maybe they already have a decent PC, you know, they're really eyeballing half life, half life, Alex, for example, then this is just one more notch in the belt that says, okay, this is, this is even more content that I can have. So, so yeah, I don't think that this is a reason and an exclusive only reason to to maybe make an investment but it can be an additional reason lee you've been a bit quiet what what are your thoughts on it overall? <laughs> <laughs> um well i've had I've not, i haven't had the greatest results if i'm honest i've tried a motocross rally that made me feel really sick but it's it's a, i'm getting a really bad frame rate issue i'm getting like 30 frames on this even when i'm downscaling it to like 0.8 of a percent and i'm using virtual desktop to upscale things i'm just not getting the frames even on low so i don't know i know alex has got someone on the team that's got a 3060 super that i've been getting some uh, pretty decent results with it so maybe i should try and have a word with them but yeah on my system it, it's it's not been great but i did have a bit of joy yesterday i say a bit of joy it's still a pretty arduous task um playing pine harbor i think it's a demo on steam it's a ue5 demo and vram put a video out and he's actually gone to the trouble of putting motion controllers in that and you've got like a torch and so your left controller is a torch and your right one is is actually the gun now as easy as loading profiles in for some reason it wouldn't load it did load the camera in, camera angles in for the torch but not the gun so when i picked the gun it was like above my head just stuck in third person and it took us two hours and for some reason it i loaded it once and it worked so I played it for a couple of minutes and it was working fine. But then when I died, the gun went back to above my head and was stuck in third person again. So there are little kinks like that, that, I mean, will people spend the time messing around with it? I mean, I enjoyed the little bit of fun I had in it. It's very Resident Evil kind of for aesthetic look to it. I think Viran got some actual grief on his video as well because he put the new Resident Evil question mark and then started to talk about the game and people saying, this isn't Resident Evil. <laughs> well it doesn't say it is it's got a question mark on it it's just it's, it's trying to get across that it, it looks like a resident evil game but yeah i've not had much joy i did try i think i've the thing is you've got to know the limits of your pc if you know the limitations of your pc uh which i always try and push things so like i was going into the titanic i think it's honor and glory or something like that and and i was getting like four frames a second running that and just know the limits that your PC has got. If you've got a PC that, like mine, is a 1080p medium to low graphics at best, don't expect to be running something 3,800 by 2,000 in a headset. It's not going to work, even if you put it on low. So I've not had the greatest experience. But saying that, I did go to PD's and try Atomic Heart, I believe it's called. And he's got a 3080 Ti, same as Gary's. And, and that looked pretty much like native vr to me i don't know if you tried that one yet steve that one's on your list it's it's uh, on my list to get to I, I i don't own it yet so i didn't grab it on the sale and i wished i did yeah that one looks really good but as soon as i put a uh, asw on which is synchronous space warp uh, i put that on from virtual desktop so i set it at 45 frames and then right uh, upscale it to 90 in virtual desktop i was getting better performance then and it wasn't making me feel as sick so maybe that's the way for me to go trying some of the indie games that may be a, a less graphically resourceful for my PC and, and seeing how I get on with those. So, so I will, you know, it's trial and error and yeah. So what, what, what I've sort of figured out and anyone listening to this and I think in Gary's case, he wants to play in a different part of his house. So he's kind of relegated to Wi-Fi if, if, if you want to do it that yeah. way. But if you're playing in the same space and it's a seated gamepad game, I don't necessarily see the value of going wireless. And then I know some of the UEVR team, some of their 
uh, manual or instruction videos. They're like, you know, open steam VR or whatever. And I'm not, I'm not doing that. So I'm playing over linked. Uh, I put my headset on, I, I connect via, via link into, I forget what they call it. You know, it pops up when you plug the cable in and then in the injector, I, you know, from, from within, within the, um, the desktop view inside the headset, um, I start the game and then I inject the game and, um, sometimes a game will have forced, what do they call it? Forced focus where you can't like tap easily tap out. And so if you don't have a keyboard handy, and it's another reason why I like using the, uh, Oculus link is that their keyboard, unlike the keyboard in, in the open VR, uh, actually has an alt key on the keyboard. So from within VR, you can hit alt tab and then you can tab over to the injector and, and, and then inject it. So I'm doing open XR. There is no open VR running. There's no vir virtual desktop layer running. And I found my performance to be notably better when I minimize. Now this would only apply if you're using an Oculus based mm -hmm. headset, of course, if you're using a different headset. Mm -hmm. um, so cutting down some of those compositor layers and such, um, and cutting down on the wireless transmission gave me significantly better performance. All right. Yeah, we'll stay. I was wireless. And while Steve's mentioned all that, I'm sat here looking at my link cable on the floor, which is literally, <laughs> you know, <laughs> this here. Look, I can, I'll show it on the for video purposes for Steve. It's here, and my PC's there. So I could literally sit with the link cable in and play it like that, but I was just playing it wirelessly. Um, yeah, so <laughs> that's definitely a nice tip for me. I'm in exactly the same situation. Yeah. My link cable is on the floor <laughs> next to my PC. I'm sat next to my PC and I play wireless. And my, my link cable is just a very expensive charging cable. And it has been for ever since yeah. I've owned it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can see what it's trying to do. I can see what the injector is trying to show me. But I'm thinking I do need a better PC, to be honest. But I, I did have some issues. Like Steve says, when you first load up games, you will have to tinker. I think I tried Stray and I got some really weird, like light flickering in the corner of one of my eyes, the left eye. And I've, uh, well, I realized that turning anti lasing down in the CVR setting, something like that, not that down, that fixed mm -hmm. that. And then there was another issue with another shader. So then I fixed that. So you do get more used to it. Like Steve says, the more you go into it, you'll think, right, I've done that before. I know what that is. I know what this is. But also changing it, if you are using virtual desktop wirelessly, if you're not sat next to your PC, um, you can, I think I changed it, is it VXDR or VDXR? I remember which setting it was. Yeah, and that did yeah. that did give me a, a slight performance boost and did stop this flickering that I was getting in one of my eyes, which was, you know, kind of weird sometimes. But Stray, it was, yeah, very close to what Luke Ross, I don't know if you played it uh, with Luke Ross as well, Steve. I thought it was very, very close to what that looked like anyway. I saved it. I think it looks better. So the games that are available on Luke Ross and available on the UEV, UEVR injector, uh, I find they work way better on the injector than the Luke Ross. And, and yeah. not only do they look better, but they perform notably, notably way, way, way better. And, and I think it's part of just how Luke has to you know, develop his architecture versus the UEVR injector kind of using the native tool set that's already in the engine. Um, yeah. so stray, I, I didn't like it at all on Luke Ross. Like I could just couldn't get it to look right. The ghosting looked like just, I, I couldn't, I couldn't get comfortable enough to want to play the game, but with the injector is another title. I made myself stop playing because it just looks really, really, really good. Um, it's a walking simulator via a cat, you know, so similar to Abzu in that sense, but it's got a really interesting aesthetic to it. And, and my other surprise yeah. hit there. Uh, was grounded, uh, and I, I could see this being a little bit uh, resource intensive um, of a title, but um, I didn't like it at all with Luke Ross. It didn't really even give it much of a chance past about 10 minutes, uh, but with the UEV ejector, I uh, played it for quite a while and, and, and got into it, and it's got this kind of cartoony aesthetic, but you know, one of my favorite all-time games in VR is Subnautica, and, and this kind of gave me similar <laughs> vibes, but with an intersection between the honey i shrunk the kids you know um environment so um if you have that one i think it's worth checking out is so, sorry just quickly on grounded is that like a co-op game or is it single player you can, play i think it? you can have multiplayer right yeah i believe it's my I, it's not my style i wouldn't play it with other people unless i, I have yeah. to at some point but um the the I, i've enjoyed it single player okay just, just going back to Stray though. How much have you? How much have you played of Stray? Uh, I've, Steve, 
Oh, it's gone to Lee. Oh, sorry, just me. Um, oh, I've actually... No, no, I, no, I... Oh, Steve. you said Steve. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I heard you say Lee <laughs> there then. So, I, no. uh, an hour, maybe? Like, I'm in the city, and and right. so... And I, I, I've, I've heard people yeah. say it's only, like, two hours long. So, if that's true, I'm, I'm maybe about halfway through it. I, it yeah, it took me a right. while. Because I, I was going to say, I wasn't call, wouldn't call it a walking simulator. I would call it an adventure adventure game, but you're a cat. The, the first sort of, yeah. I don't know, maybe the first 30 minutes are very just... Yeah, I think when it okay, came out, yes. like, people were saying, oh, I'm just walking around as a cat and I'm jumping from one yeah. ledge to another. And I'm like, look, just keep with it. Because at a certain point, yeah. the, the story actually kicks in after about an hour. And then you're like, wow, this is yeah. Yeah. So genius I'm, what they're doing. Yeah, I've but not no, gotten to my, that point then. My first then. playthrough was... Yeah, uh, right. you keep my, going. My first, play, my first playthrough was about six to seven hours. Yeah, I think mine's yeah. about the same, yeah. You, if you know what you're doing, you can do it in sub two hours because there is, there's actually a trophy to do it under two hours, and I did it in about an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. But that was knowing exactly what to do, where to go, what to collect. I, um, and obviously the solution to all the puzzles. So. I, I picked that up when it first launched. And I, I refunded mm. it after about an hour. No, no, it gets really just, good. It's clever. I, I, it's clever. I really like the look of it. It just it was disappointing to me, but maybe I need to stick with it. And then... oh, it's so good. I think it's oh, just one a, of my favourite. Yeah, oh. it's a cat thing as well, right? If you're a cat lover, it's just the mannerisms of the cat and the movement of the cat. It's oh, like, yeah, yeah, this is yeah, so yeah, true to what a cat would be like well, if just, it was doing it. Yeah, yeah, but it, it, is, it, it is a story. It is an adventure game. You know what I mean? It is go find, find the you know, find the items you need, the, take them to interact with the characters you need to interact with and get the story and everything. It is, yeah, it's a, yeah. Oh, it's, I mean, when it, when it first came out, I did a grief. video uh, in depth 3D on this and it, it looked yeah. it looked really great in that and it ran fantastic in depth 3D. <laughs> so I was I was curious to see how it looked and while it didn't perform as well, so maybe more tweaking my end, ASW, things like that, I could get it looking a little better. But even parts yeah. where you first start off, Steve, and, you, and you're walking it like, I think it's on the right-hand side and you're like underneath where it's raining or something and you can see right down this long area and it's, it just looks fantastic in, it, in VR. It's, it does. It's like a game really made for VR. It looks, it's, it's, it's quite, quite beautiful. Um, I'll give a tip. Yeah. So I, I didn't know this initially. Lies of P, it's a, um, a game I've really been looking forward to. And, and the developer of the game, I can't remember who developed it, but they, they unabashedly just kind of, copied the bloodborne model like like they're not even hiding it it's it's <laughs> it's it's their attempt at, at redoing bloodborne so and i loved bloodborne so uh i was really looking forward to this game and and i got it working really well with uevr pretty much right out of the box i didn't have to do anything but it's got some anti-aliasing that's that's resulting in a softer image than i liked and I played for probably three or four hours before I realized you, in the injector, you can go into advanced and, and get to what they call CVARs. And I assume VAR stands for a variable of some sort. I don't know what the C stands for. Yeah, console variable. And, yeah. Console variable. and um, down there they have a, uh, you can adjust in real time. And I think after the fact, I, I saw that Lee, when you met with Alex, like he he actually covered this in in that video and I'd forgotten yeah. about it, but you can, uh, they have a, a, like a real time sharpness tool Right. And, and I'm a yeah. person that kind of likes a very sharp, not overly anti-aliased image. And once I dialed that sharpness up, like it looks nice and crisp. And um, the fact that they have that, and there's some color tools and stuff that you can also manipulate. I don't, I don't really play with color. I'll let, I'll let the engine do it by default. But um, they have some nice like real-time tools that you can adjust the slider right there while you're in the game and, and see, the, see the effect. And um, there have been instances like in Jedi Fallen Order where I've had to back the resolution down in order to get the performance that I want. And then when I do that, I can go into the sharpness tool and kind of bring that up. It's it's not a true replacement for resolution, but it, it help gives uh, takes away some of that fuzziness from an edges and and such that and it's an image I prefer better. So what you're saying is we actually we actually need a fifty ninety. <laughs> so the. I've, I've ran across two titles that, that I would like to have a little more horsepower on, and that is um, Hogwarts, although it, it runs well enough. It's totally playable, so it's, I don't need more than a 4090. But if I had more than a 4090, I, I would welcome it. Um, and then the uh, Fallen Order, right? I can, there's, I'm, I'm having to walk that down a little bit. What do you, um, did you see the the new cards that have been announced by nvidia so they're coming out at the end of this month i think you've got the 4080 yeah, super and stuff yeah. like that 
uh yeah once again i'm being tempted <laughs> uh, i probably won't i'll probably wait until the 5000 series but we'll see the uh, super the 4080 super is a, is a, a discount because the 4080 was 12.99 us i think expensive. yeah, yeah. Super and then, grand into it yeah it's, it's, it's only about five percent uh faster than the 4080 apparently but it, i think they're focusing on on price on that one yeah said, so. yeah so that's that's i don't know I, I, I won't i doubt it but yeah it's at least having some more options when do you guys think the 5000 series will come out next year 2025 yeah i think so end of this year at the earliest i reckon yeah. but I, I reckon next year yeah. okay um has anybody else got anything they want to mention on the uh uev or i mean oh, go on. if people are struggling or do you want to check any games out if you go to the flat to vr discord and join the sorry i've just knocked my light over if, if anyone heard that um the ue vr section and they do have a ue game section in there as well so they've got all the games that people have tried and got working in it i mean they do say work perfectly or works okay or works well but mm. i mean try them yourselves and see how you get on with that i mean i was playing a game yeah. that allegedly doesn't i tried ride five and that wasn't supposed to work at all but i got that to work straight away just by using the injector as default but yeah, it's got a lot of the lists and the games in there. And you'll get, if you're having an issue in the game, have a look for it in there. It might have someone already might have solved it. Or if you're looking for profiles, say for Hogwarts. I mean, I've seen profiles. I don't know if you've tried this one, Steve, or not. But someone's got it working in uh, first person, sticked off with a wand. And they've also put on an added mod on where you can actually speak the spells. So that's kind of cool. So they've got things like that to check out as well. So yeah, I definitely recommend going to check them out. Yeah. The only thing I would say is... Sorry. <laughs> Go I was going to say, it, it, this opens the door, right? This is not by any case yeah. done, right? Now people are, are going to get in there and you're going to have more manpower to kind of fix issues and, 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 and get creative. I'm, I'm, I'm a consumer, right? Like I don't have too much free time and I just kind of want to play the games. I'll tinker a little bit to get an experience I want, but I'm not going to go in and mod something, you know, even though I probably could figure it out and be a modder. I just, I don't have that kind of time available. So I'm happy that we now have a wide community and not just one person that um, is going to kind of continue to improve and continue to open the door. And then I'm going to come right behind their work, download the profile and enjoy it. Yeah. I think that's the way to go for like 99% yeah. of the people out there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's going to benefit everyone in the long run. I know um, Flat to VR put a post out. Someone was saying, "Oh, well, well Des be funny about this being out and, and things like that." And the, and I think he said, like forty devs have been in touch with them now, saying, "Look, we've seen this UE VR, VR mod running on our games, and we're actually considering making an, an actual official VR port for, for, for our game yeah. as well." So I'll take that as maybe they weren't considering it before, but now they've <laughs> seen it, how it's running, and, and how easy it can be, maybe to get it sorted out. That they're going to look into that. So that's only a win-win situation. Yeah, in my yeah, eyes, definitely, anyway. Def definitely. The, the one thing I will say is, on, on when you see these lists of how well things work, anything that's listed as works perfectly, I think some people have a very different opinion of what works perfectly means compared to what I do. You know, it's works perfectly for me would be it does work perfectly in the fact that it not only does it run well is like there is no tweaking required to actually get a shader working or you need to take a shader out or whatever because i've i've you know i've yet to see anything what says work perfectly that actually on my machine at least does so i think i think, I think it's a statement from the it's a statement from the tool itself saying with this title, the tool can get a near perfect experience, not necessarily your machine or that you won't have to tinker. You know, if, if, if someone's released a profile, you shouldn't have to tinker unless you want to change mm -hmm. the camera perspective, right? Like if, if, if you had a similarly spec machine as me and I give you my lies of P profile, you shouldn't have to tinker. You should import profile, hit play yeah. and it should run off. And, and, and for a game that says, you know, works poorly, that's kind of regardless of, of, of hardware. It, it's saying that you can have a 60, 90 and it's just not going to work. Right. Because of, the way the tool yeah. itself is. So I look at the works well, works perfectly for as a, as a reference from what the tool's capable of, not necessarily that it's going to work perfectly on your machine, given whatever hardware you might have. 
Yeah, fair enough. I think um, as well with, with this mod, it's just a. I mean, there's no doubt it's a net benefit to me. It's like it's just good to have the option out there. Whether you want to go yeah. through the hoops and, and the steps, some stuff will work pretty well with very li little amount of work and then other stuff you have to put a lot more work into. Um, one of the things I've seen a few devs on Twitter mention how, like Denny Unger, for example, from Cloudhead Games, he's, I, I don't know his opinion on the on the mod necessarily, but he's mentioned that he's, you know, he, he's very much for this ground up, built for VR kind of experience, which of course we all want, <laughs> you know, if we could get these games built for VR from the ground up, that would be the, the ideal solution to all of this. But what this mod provides is really just like a, an option for people that, that do want to tinker, do want that option. And it's not going to work for everybody. That's the thing. It's not it's not going to be suitable for everybody. You've got to be a certain kind of person that does want to put in the work to, to get that experience. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's great. You know, it, just to have that option, I think is great anyway. Yeah. It's definitely been received better, or I say better, but it's definitely been received more positively from people like, I don't know, myself, PD, uh, people that have messed with flat to VR mods like Depth 3D or Vorpex and things like that before. Because, I mean, we sort to see what it's trying to do, but the people I've seen, a couple of my friends just go, yeah, I've tried it five minutes, not for me, I just turn it straight off. Mm. But who haven't tried anything like that before. They're just used to the ground up VR game and that's what they want, which is fair enough, which uh, is, you know, uh, yeah, like you say. Yeah, it's, it's fair enough. If you want that, you don't need to touch this mod. So, so don't bother because, um, yeah, it's not for you. I think the, the only thing I will say is when I went into this mod, I was hoping, this was beyond expectation, of course, but when I mentioned earlier, <laughs> uh, Resident Evil 7, the Prey Dog mod for Resident Evil 7 works so good. And if every game you could just get that experience with just a little bit of tweaking, you could get that exact experience. And I don't feel like, from what I've tried anyway so far, I can't get that level of you know, it working that well. It, it feels so native. That aesthetically, game. yes. I, I Most of what I'm running feels aesthetically in, in terms of three-dimensional depth and all that does feel as good um sorry my alexa's going off um oh, the stage from you to gary <laughs> yeah the, it's normally mine steve that goes on. the um what what is not going to be there is is the motion control right and that's that's what i meant by the difference between the mod and the tool right like someone yeah. could then and i think there's hope that the community steps up and for the major super popular titles that someone then goes in and and, and actually does a, a proper motion control mod uh, but yeah, that's not what the tool itself is necessarily trying to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, well, we we wanted to do this. This is our personal, our individual top three VR games. So we were talking about, thinking about doing this in the last episode, but we decided just to, you know, skip that one, get through the news and the stuff that we want to talk about, and then then dive into some of the games that we enjoyed last year. And the, the reason we delayed it was mainly because of Asgard's Wrath 2 as well. That came out only a couple of days before the last episode. So we wanted to give that a chance to make its way into this list possibly as well. Um, but who shall I go to first then? Shall we do this in sort of just go through each of us in turn uh, with one game? Yeah. yeah. Are these in any particular order, or are they just? Oh, you I've know, not. Have you have you put them? No, I've not done that. No. Not, no, 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 no. I'm yeah, not doing in any enough. particular order. No. I mean, the thing is, last year there were so many, so many VR Game of the Year awards popping up, with everyone saying different things and voting different. I don't <laughs> necessarily agree with that type of thing, but mm. I, I sooner prefer like just giving like the the games that we've enjoyed and what and what's uh, raised our interest and and got us pumped for more VR. <laughs> than anything else well, the, the VR game I will just preface this by saying I have got P45s ready for anybody who's put another fisherman's tail into their list <laughs> well, well, I, was, I was going to uh, say Labyrinth <laughs> Labyrinth is on all of our list right because it was Steam yeah, VR exactly, yeah. <laughs> well, I've never even heard of that game Steam until I saw it on the Steam to, to vote for I'm like well yeah. I've never heard of this game what, neither did I stuff? Uh, no, I <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly oh god yeah. um, okay so let's make a start on this I'm going to go over to Rog first for your first game in no particular order what was one of your favorites from last year okay so 
I'll go with this one first. Um, seventh guest, mm. and the re- the reason being, it was it was one of those games where I was sort of looking forward to it, and I wasn't mainly because of there's a bit of nostalgia there with it being the old you know the old PC game, and I wasn't expecting anything. I was expecting it to be sort of I was expecting to really not like it, and it was one of those games where I was pleasantly surprised <laughs> and uh, yeah I just really enjoyed my time with it I, I thought there was stuff wrong with it which annoyed me but it annoyed me because I actually liked the game um, and yeah it just I, I, had a, I had a nice time with it I had a fun time with it it was one one of those games where once I stopped playing I was I was outside the game and I was sat just thinking about it and you know mm. about about the puzzles that I, I was you know getting stuck on or whatever and um, it wasn't the balance was just right, I think, for me as well. It wasn't the stuff... So, I mean, some stuff was easy, some stuff wasn't, but there wasn't anything there what got me frustrated or was overly difficult. You know, it, the, 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 level, the level of the puzzles was, was just happened to be bang on for me, and I just really enjoyed my time with it. Mm, yeah, yeah. I, I liked it. What I've played a bit, I've not finished it, but I thought it was a pretty good game. What do you, uh, Lee, what did you think of that one? I mean, I played, like I say, not really too much. I thought it looked really good in VR. They made a really good game out of it, out of it looking like that. I kind of liked it. It kind of reminded me a bit like of a, a and this probably apply to you, Steve. I don't know what sort of things you've got or you've been to like Universal Studios and stuff. It kind of reminded me of like Alton Towers when you go into like, <laughs> if, if they had a haunted house in Alton Towers, it'd be like that with all like, the yeah, smoke coming yeah. out the bottom of the doors and things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like that. It's kind of really, really reminded me of that. Now, my daughter played this all the way through and she's not, a big VR fan. The other, or the game she's played is, is it a room? The the other one is it? I yeah, can't yeah, yeah, Dark. Room, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's the only other one she's ever played. But she loved this. She said it was fantastic. So for her to even get through, you know, go through it all and play it, it it's just showing you what what type of game it is. And some of the puzzles, I, I was watching her do some of the puzzles, and I was like, even I won't think of that. And <laughs> so so it's definitely a game for her. Yeah. Yeah. Did you play that one, Steve? Or? Yes, I played it, and it is also on my list. I I really ah, there we go then. Go oh, ahead. <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, I played it PC wireless to virtual desktop, so I was able to crank resolution, and I thought it looked really it looked really good. There were a couple. I agree with with, with Raj. The balance was 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 really good. There were a couple times I think I knew what the solution was, but the game just kind of somehow is looking for you to insert a certain way or or do something in a certain order even though you've got the solution right it doesn't it doesn't unlock in the in the code or whatever to 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 carry you on to the next step so so there were a couple frustrating moments mm. um but but outside of that i, I thought it was a, a really good time and and it was one of those games that i played and I only played that game. Like I didn't want to go play something else. Like it was like, okay, I'm gonna pick yeah. up my headset now, and I'm going back into Seventh Guest. And I, I had no nostalgia for it. <laughs> I'd never played the original or anything, so it was just a new experience altogether for me. Yeah, I mean, even if you played the original, I think there was one single. I think somebody pointed out there was one single puzzle in this new version that was in the original, and but all the other puzzles were original to the new to the re-release, even though the story was basically mm-hmm. the same. Yeah. Um, well, since Steve, that was one of Steve's as well. Let's go over to Lee. What, what, uh, what's your first on the list? Okay, before you kick me off this Discord call, <laughs> all right, I'll start. My- I've got, I've got you, I've got you down as another fisherman's. Te- uh, sorry, no, actually, I've put you down as Dungeons of Eternity, Hubris, and Vertigo. So well, right. yeah, well, you, you kind of close. I've, I've tried to put things of. See, the first one I've got is Switchback, actually, for PSVR Ooh. two. Now that may be quite controversial in a number of ways well, it's not because it's I mine as well <laughs> there you go See, i love this game as soon as i started playing it i just love this whole being in like a, a a car or some sort of roller coaster and you're going through this world and it's the depth the the sound and i would say the visuals as well because you know we've been through this before but the visuals that i played were fantastic the overall yeah. haptics on the psvr2 we shake the guns to uh, someone don't clip that by the way who you see me doing this uh, <laughs> on the guns uh but yeah I, I really enjoyed that game and now i only played i maybe played two or three levels i think i've been back to pds since and played a bit more of it as well 
when he when the actual update came out for all the people that were struggling with the visuals like Rog and for some reason or other we don't we don't know we've never got to the bottom of why that was like but yeah it's one of those that gave me a, just a feeling of excitement and I think there's a part on a ship, right, Steve, when you, you're playing it, there's a woman jumps up off the floor and there's all these things flying around her and the depth and it just really got to me. And yeah, I just thought that was a, a brilliant game that maybe only me and Steve like. <laughs> well, I never, I, I didn't try it when it, they had that whole pre-patch drama and, and, and all that. So I don't have that tainting my perspective i i waited until they sorted it out and it's not a perfect game um and when when i came up with the three games that i'm listing here i'm i'm really just listing and i excluded all mods by the way so no ue vr type stuff i'm just listing games that i enjoyed this year right i didn't i didn't yeah. like in the old yeah. vr round table when we do our big annual like game ranking stuff like like I, I didn't put any of that thought into it it's like what three games did i play and enjoy the most this year end of story yeah and and this was honestly i had to go I, I i questioned it like you lee i was like man like this is gonna be controversial or people will think i'm stupid or whatever mm -hmm. but like no but i legitimately enjoyed the game so it's on my list i think after the patched it um i did go through and i did fin i did finish it and it was fine it, it was good it, it had its moments definitely but i still think there was too much downtime with it for me there was too much time where you were just sat there waiting as you tr sort of trundled along um and yeah i think it'd have been a better game if it was half as long and they cut out any sort of padding yeah maybe i didn't get that far like i said i've only played the first two or three levels i think the, the last level i played i was like in some sort of burning house and all the fire was coming around me uh, and yeah and i was i was glad to get out of that so i think peter said yeah. Do you want to play any more i was like no i've done <laughs> <laughs> i've jumped enough playing this bit yeah it had its moments there were some really nice sort of set pieces to it it's just some of the bits in between that Mm -hmm. I mean, the video is on my channel. If anyone wants to have a look and see me laugh, well, squealing like a little girl, it's it's up to you. But yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, definitely, definitely one of the, my favourites. Okay. Um, well, my first one on the list, and I'm going to get this one out of the way because uh, Steve, do you remember when, when we did VR round two with the first one, the 2016 Game of the Year show? Anthony would say Arizona Sunshine, which was our game of the year that year. He mm -hmm. was talking to us behind the scenes and he was saying it's recency bias and all, all of this kind of stuff, which, and he <laughs> yeah. was almost tempting me, like, maybe it is recency bias. Maybe that's why. But this game has to be on my list. It's As God's Wrath 2, of course. And um, I've got to put it down there and get it out of the way. I think it's great. <laughs> it's on mine as well yeah i do think it's really good and it's i don't think it is recency bias i think it's no. one of the games that i just when i think about playing vr at the moment it's the one i want to play and i'm playing other stuff more <laughs> of the case of i should play this or i should play that and this is the one i want to play so um yeah they've done an absolutely fantastic job for a standalone platform and the i think they've updated the textures now as well i don't know if it, that they so they've done a, a couple of updates for the quest 3 but i think they've also now said that they are pushing a update for texture resolution in the game as well on this quest 3 specifically which was one of the things one of the main criticisms because that that's the one thing that made it look a little bit more mm. mobile than than everything yeah. else so um yeah thoroughly enjoying this and once again i'm in no rush to complete this I was listening to the VR gaming podcast and, and main fan and Alex were talking on that. Um, main fan was saying he's not the kind of person that can just sort of, he, once he starts a game, he needs to, to finish it. And, and yeah. I'm not that kind of person. I'm more like Alex, to be honest. I, I, I can have this just rolling along in the background and, and jumping every now and again. Um, yeah. And I'm also not the kind of person that needs to like break every single one of these boxes and stuff to collect all the collectibles. Um, I can just sort of, <laughs> I can easily walk past a few of them if I need to and, and that kind of stuff. But there's so much going on in this game. I think it's the best. It's one of the best, if not the best, standalone mobile vr games that, that i've ever played so yeah thoroughly enjoying it so far i would go as far as to say it is the best game on quest yeah hands yeah. down um it's i don't know how much time i've put into it because the on quest games optimizer it, it, it allegedly once you pay for total like the extra upgrade thing 
it can tell you how much time you've spent on a game and it tells you it in two different places and they both appear to be wrong. So by the best of my judgment is I've probably averaged at least an hour a day since it launched, which means probably somewhere in the region of 30 hours. Because some days, you know, some days I've not played it, but like, you know, the other day I was on it for, you know, three hours. Yeah. So I think I've, I've probably averaged about 30 hours so far on it. And it's just so good. Yeah. Um, there's, it's got its problems. There's definitely points in it what need refining. Um, I know there was a, a bit on Discord where I, I said to you guys, I'd like, I'd literally just come out and I'd <laughs> up pretty much rage quit out of the yeah. game. There's a bit of it where the design isn't, it needs tweaking and it's a very simple tweak. You can see it's a very simple tweak they need to do. And it, it, it just spoiled this section. But there's, I was literally playing it yesterday and I walked through a door. I just got one of those moments where there was just something big there and I just looked up and it was looming up. And the, it was one of those moments where the scale just absolutely just whacks you in the yeah, face. Yeah. And, you know, it's just a way that a flat game could, just could never do. I've, for me, some of the limitations with it uh, uh, sort of like the invisible walls i do find that a little bit frustrating you don't have as much freedom in the game in certain areas it's like you feel like you should be able to you, you can't really jump over like <laughs> or walk over or you've not got a jump button you can't really jump over rubble or anything like that and some of the the limitations of that get in the way of immersion mm -hmm. sometimes and really it's nitpicking i think as a game it's fantastic people have, have said some people have said it's a better game than Half-Life Alex. I don't, I mean, it's not even close to me, but I put more weight in immersion. And uh, Roger, I think you probably put more weight in like individual gameplay. Oh, yeah. no, I'm, I'm right. As a, I'm sorry for, for me personally, I this trash as Half-Life Alex, but maybe that's just it's, my, maybe it's the type of game I prefer. I love games what give me a sense of exploration. Mm. And even if it's not a, a, a full open world, it, there's enough there. In, it gives you a sense of I can go and wander over here and find out if there's something there and oh I have found something here there's somewhere else to go in and it's that sense of discovery and the, the discovery balanced with the puzzles balanced with the combat it's just yeah, yeah it's very it good, just all yeah. comes together for I think me. I think that just comes down to where you put weight in, in certain aspects of games as well like in, in immersion, yeah. in, oh, immersion yeah. or individual gameplay mechanics and stuff like that yeah. Asgard's Wrath is doing a fantastic job um Lee Steve yeah. have you got anything to say on Asgard's Wrath 2 at all it did not make my list I was very close and it is only because I haven't played it enough I've only played about an hour and a half and I'll, I'll say my takeaway my general right. takeaway is that it's incredibly incredibly impressive to be running on standalone hardware like this I love the play that it does on scale um, I'm probably also detracted by um, listening to main fam in the rendered reality discord where he's what felt like for <laughs> two weeks. He's like, I'm still in the desert. I'm still in the desert. And, <laughs> yeah. and, and I don't even, I don't even know what that means exactly, yeah. but I just, I, you know, if, if he's right. droning on, I'm, I'm not the type of person that likes an area to drone on. I'm, I'm typically like him in the sense that once I get going on a game, I want to stick with it. And I had to break my mold uh, for this yeah. podcast and play a bunch of UE VR stuff that I wasn't going to do. Right. Like I just want to complete lies of P. And so um, I, I agree with <laughs> main fan in a lot of ways here. So it did not make my list only because I, I haven't spent enough time with it, but I, I it's worthy. Yeah, I am still in the desert. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, it's if you, yeah, the first hour and a half of that game is a tutorial, basically. Um, once you, once you get into the desert, it's you think, oh my god, you you might get a bit worried, but it wasn't a problem for me because there's lots of different places within the desert you go to. You know, there's big dungeons and stuff to go down, and with all the puzzle elements involved in those, and it's just I absolutely loved it. Um, I'm on the second. I'm on the second character. I've got, I've got, you know, I'm doing, I'll, I'll shut up. I'll shut up. I <laughs> don't want to spoil anything. I, I don't want, just don't want to spoil <laughs> I was, it. I was just, just quickly before we move on, uh, Rog, how, how far, so when we last spoke, I, I'd got past that, past a certain point, um, and I, I'm probably about two hours beyond that now. How far ahead are you from that? Do you know? I can't even remember what point no. that was. Look, this is a problem I've had with this game. I don't honestly, my memory this, and I think it might be an issue with the game in that sometimes it'll tell you about a mechanic and then 
there was one mechanic it, it gave to you, and this is the point I got stuck on. And then that mechanic wasn't used until a week mm, later. Yeah. I have got no memory because you re, you remind you well you said oh well it te- it tells you to do that in this area. Once, I'd forgotten yeah. forgotten about it to the point I can't even remember the, doing the, it. The only the only reason I remembered that is because it was so weird. I didn't understand why I was doing it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that that's why. But anyway, um, yeah, As God's Wrath Two is um, fantastic game. Um, so you guys, so Rog, Steve, you've both done two games so far. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. Okay, let's skip over to Lee then. What's your next one on the list? Well, it was a close one. Okay, Rog, get ready to write that name. Um, <laughs> now, <laughs> whilst I really did love Another Fisherman's Tale, I think at a certain point it started to get a bit, not um, not boring, but I think when they got to this weird uh, place they were supposed to be going to it's a bit spoiler alert and it just it just got too weird for me and then when i finished the game i thought i really enjoyed it up to that part so the other game i my second game i did pick was actually hubris so you were right rog uh, because i think i did try it briefly on pc and got motion sick so that could be another just thing of what my uh, pc is capable of but i did play all the way through that before they even put the first patch out which was like three days later so for something to grab my attention and keep me playing yes it's very linear you're going from a to b and you're following through and you're doing pretty much the same sort of thing really with the shooting aspect there is some climbing so they've chucked a bit of climbing in there that we did struggle with a bit right rog but i think what they patched that and it fixed mm. all the climbing part of it but i just I got really quite gripped by the story as well and i know since i finished it they've done i think two more updates or maybe even three so they've got a quest three patch on there as well so I'd like to go back to that. I just liked how everything seemed to work pretty easy. I liked swapping my guns. I liked where they were in my hands. And it felt like that's where they were positioned correctly. And yeah, I just I re- really enjoyed Hubris for what it was. Uh, on standalone as well, I thought it was really impressive. Uh, yeah, I, I only played it on PC, but I felt like it... In places, I felt it was a bit janky and stuff like that, but... I enjoyed it. I played through it and I thought it was pretty good. And I, I like the story as well. I think there's just certain aspects of it where th- there was just weird aspects where you're going through certain sections and you're like talking to somebody and they're walking through this elongate, like this, this long corridor and yeah. you've just got to wait for them to get to where yeah, they yeah. need to go for, to progress the story. Little things like that, really. Um, but I thought the, the gun mechanics were really good. The environment, of course, you know, the graphics looks great on pc anyway uh yeah i i enjoyed it a few bugs here and there but yeah i enjoyed it too yeah i mean there was some weird thing when you first pick up like that i can only describe it like a plumbus from like rick and morty and you're yeah, picking this thing weird, up in your hand yeah. and it's like i don't know if i can put this out on video or not because i don't know what folks are going <laughs> to think what this is but then you don't seem to really use them at all through the rest of the game so there's some like yeah weird little things like that in it but no i i i, I really enjoyed playing it and it's not very often i do i think i only played through about maybe two or three games all the way fully last year so if you know to fully play through that is i've got to put it on my list really yeah yeah okay well i've uh, i'll give my second one as well then so i'm gonna put uh, i've got a list of five down here and i'm gonna choose i reckon vertigo 2 must be on your no list. the reason is uh, it is on the list it's on the list but i'm not going to choose that as one of my three only because, because you're stuck I, on the I, fire I, monster I feel... same as me still I feel <laughs> no. Are you I still feel... stuck on the fire monster? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I'm definitely yeah. I've not I've not played it. That's the reason. <laughs> no, that's what I mean. That's I'm what I'm putting, stuck on I'm that. I'm putting that it rip. down here. I can't. It's fake. It's fake for me to say that. Um, that's one of my favorite games. I've not even got past the first boss, so I can't really put yeah, that down. Yeah. Uh, but I'm while acknowledging it is fantastic game, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. But no, I'm going to put my second one, and this is one that I, I was struggling. So. I'm going to put Arizona Sunshine 2 down here and I can understand why this wouldn't be even close to the list for a lot of people but playing through it I had a great time and it did a lot of what it did in the first game but it did it better and I enjoyed the story I enjoyed just progressing through these different environments the the set pieces that it has there as well I miss that kind of thing these set pieces you don't get big set pieces in games in vr games really and and i appreciate that in this one so i think it's a a good game i honestly do and it's it's one that just stood out to me as being the thing that i enjoyed this year so um yeah i don't know anybody got any thoughts on arizona sunshine 2 
I don't. I've not played it, but I'm just going to say recency bias. Both of your titles, recency <laughs> bias. Well, I was yeah. trying to zoom in on Steve's face when you said it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I think I think it's a good game anyway. Um, Rog, let's go over to you then. Your final game. My final game is Ghost Signal, mm, yeah. and I've got to I've got to pick this because it's I've spent more time in this than any other VR game last year. Um, I played through the thing with Ghost Signal is you play through it and it is once you get to sort of the end it's it's one of those games where it's not the true end and it, it's it's a it's a roguelite it's designed to be repeatedly played to get out you know to get the entire story and I think I got maybe halfway through through the the different threat I think there's ten threat levels and I think I'd maybe got to threat level five on quest and then obviously we we, we got a key for the PSVR two version and I played it all the way through to the end and I finished it I got through all the threat levels and it just kept me going but it kept me going back to it uh, and you know I, so fifty hours at least combined between quest and PSVR it's it, it's it's got to be on there and I just enjoyed it so much it became absolutely before it became my sort of like game i played when i was listening to like a podcast mm. um because once you've pl once you've played through it there is sort of like speech in it but it's all subtitled and once you've played through it once anyway you don't really need that so it's like you know knock knock that vo knock the volume down and listen to a podcast while i play it and it's just i just really enjoyed it there was, there was enough variety there that i didn't get bored I, I sort of keep hoping they'll sort of add a bit more and more to it and they did patch it they did actually because the original release you had one ship and then they patched in two more ships, which control very differently, and so that that really opens it up as well. It alters the pl alters the way you sort of how combat works, how aggressive you are, or how defensive you are, depending on which ship you're using. And uh, one of the other ships I ended up I didn't like at first, and then it sort of ended up becoming my favourite once I'd got to grips with how you're supposed to use that mm. ship. Um, and it's just yeah, I just absolutely loved my time with it. It's really 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 good. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You've played it on Quest and PSVR two, I think, haven't you? So yeah, yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, um, I don't know if either of you guys played Go Signal. No. Uh, I mean, I yeah. played bits of it, but I struggled because I'm, <laughs> I'm not very good at those type of things. Like I said before, my brain works slightly different, so I can't maneuver and shoot something else that's coming in a different direction at the same time <laughs> and things so I, I just need to get my head around that but i thought as for where it appears in the game in like the 3d space of the game i thought that was really clever with the planets and the mm. you know how it looks in the in the universe as such yeah. i did like the look of that yeah but yeah. i've just got to really get into it it really does look good in psvr because of the just because of the OLEDs. OLEDs, yeah 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 uh okay steve what's your final game Gran Turismo 7. Is it 7? Whatever. The, the PSVR one. <laughs> um, yeah. I I ended up liking this a lot more. And, you know, I, I kind of go in phases where I want to play something sort of simulator. And then I get burnt out on simulator S stuff and don't play it for a while. And this year, you know, anytime I wanted to sit down in my seat and... and do that it, i kept going back to gt7 because although it d doesn't for me it doesn't have as high a fidelity that i would get on my pc um i found the gameplay the the accessibility of it the i don't want to say arcadiness of it right it wasn't it wasn't overly real i didn't feel like i had to you know dial in the camber of my rear left wheel and stuff like like i feel like some of these simulators mm -hmm. just get too deep this was this was just very approachable and but also realistic enough right it wasn't you know just a, a arcade game so um yeah. it made my list based on just volume of how much i played it this year yeah I think the thing what maybe sort of spoiled it slightly for me was that I pretty much, ha I absolutely hammered it when it came out flat. Mm. Um, so I, I think that did take some of the stuff away from me. And I mentioned in one of the previous podcasts that I'd sort of, I'd given up on it now at this point because it's just, I went back in when they did the update what had the snow levels and um, I'd, it was the first time I'd really gone back into anything on PSVR for a while, half having sort of gotten used to quest three optics <laughs> and i found i found it a struggle i found it a struggle with the with the sweet spot and the and the r word 
and it's like I don't know if I can do this anymore. <laughs> it's I'm 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 sort of at that point where I think that PSVR two games for me now have got to be a native ninety or native one twenty for me to bother. Yeah, uh, Lee. Okay, what's your final one? It's no surprise to Raj that it is Dungeons of Eternity. <laughs> um, I actually jumped back in it last week I think I mentioned before I've been playing with Phil he, actually, he came around to my house mm. to try the Quest 3 and, and immediately bought one and then his missus bought one like the day after as well so they've all got Quest 3s now and I know he'd bought it and I said have you tried Dungeons of Eternity yet because I have I didn't want to rush him into anything what's got smooth locomotion or anything like that but he's been playing mm. for a couple of weeks well a, m- a month or two now and he seems to be getting on alright I said look let's try Dungeons of Eternity uh, and see how you get on and he did say look I've jumped in it once but I didn't know what I was doing so I said, fine, don't worry about it, I'm a pro. <laughs> Jump in with me. Now, this is kind of harps back to, reminds me a bit of PD when he says, always record. There's always content in something. Now, the games that we played, I wish I'd recorded because I don't think I've ever laughed so much in my entire life. My daughter came downstairs <laughs> to see if I was okay <laughs> because I was laughing that much. And it's changed because what they've got now is they've got settings. I think we played it, Rog, where you can pick what, what level you want it's like super hardcore or one two three four five and i just put it onto normal and we're literally teleported into the very first level so i said right you do this you put your coins up like this you can get your weapons you pull them out and, and he said right fine let's go and we went through the door to go into this room and a giant rock monster appeared and no word of a lie within three seconds i, I could see it was dead <laughs> and then it and, and then i was like trying to fire it with this this candy cane staff because it's christmas and you've got these candy cane staffs and i was dead as well and he, and he went oh you know i thought it was supposed to be good i went well that's the first time i've ever died <laughs> within like two minutes <laughs> but then we went back in and went through it all and he was he was really impressed he kept saying how good it was wow this is amazing isn't it i said i know right you the you had flying wasps what were blowing him up and i did have to pick him up a few times but i think it's, it's definitely more fun multiplayer with friends and the bit that will always stick with me was right at the end was like in like a small arena type thing at the end and there's about seven or eight skeletons and we've already got a couple of these batteries to escape the level because you get batteries to like a teleporter that brings you back to the main game and i looked at phil and he was kind of slumped over and i was like phil phil what are you doing what are you doing he went oh hold on, I've just dropped my control and it's gone under the settee. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, going, what are you doing, doing? Like trying to kill all these zomb- uh, zombies and skeletons. And he was just trying to get his controller from underneath the settee. And that kind of makes the game, more, it made it more funny for me just doing that. But just the variety of it as well, because I know they've got put a roadmap out, didn't they? They're always updating it and they've got like a year's mm. clear roadmap where they're going to give end game, more bosses, more different ways to play the game. And I just think that variety in the game as well is there and yeah it's definitely my favorite game i played last year or one of them <laughs> yeah. it, i think the, the the thing with it for for me what sort of maybe didn't why it didn't make it onto my list was was asgard's wrath 2 yeah, yeah. and the the sort of the that's got a, like a, a roguelike sort of element to it as well what you can play and obviously it's only single player but that very much feels like a similar sort of thing. Yeah, it is very similar. Yeah, you know I, I mean, you're that, going yeah. down the proced- you know, procedurally generated dungeon. Just he's just doing it on your own. I'm, I wish they could put a multiplayer sort of component into that, mm. into Asgard's Wrath, because you can sort of like hire the ghosts of other players who've been down the dungeons as well. You know, a spectral hand will come out of a portal. You grab the hand, and then you pull you pull the, the ghost of another player out of the portal, and then they join you. So there's it sort of makes you think well there's room there for if you can have like this npc yeah fighting alongside you, mean, you yeah. there's room there that the, you know the space to put another character in you dude know, you wouldn't want to be putting my ghost version out of me in dungeons you'd be trying to revive my ghost version <laughs> of me more than anything from my constant dying but no i i loved it yeah i still do yeah it is good it's it's a it's a great co-op game and yeah if you play online regularly with other people it, it's yeah you, you should buy it really yep uh, yeah, I need to get in there, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe sometime soon. Um, my final one then, and I'm going to hand in my P45 Lodge. Oh, I'm going to have to. I'm looking down my list. I think this is the one yeah. I'm going to go for, Another Fisherman's Tale. I did really enjoy this. I think it's... Uh, I, I understand the frustrations. I've listened to you and I've listened to Main Fan enough to understand the frustrations with the controls. But to me that that's just part of the game that's what you overcome to to play the game and i i loved it i thought it was great uh i think the story is pretty good as well 
Um, yeah, not a lot to say other than it's a really good little puzzle game. Original as well, I think. Yeah, that's I did like the aspects of, of the puppet hand things and, and having it run around and when you're chucking it through different areas and you con- I can understand the controls like R- Roger saying. There's one part I got really stuck on for a while because I didn't realise I was supposed to be looking. It was like some sort of machine and you, and you had to get something on this machine. So the hand was going in and then I was like, oh, where's it going? Yeah. But I didn't realise, yeah, I had to move somewhere else and look through another yeah, area yeah. and took another hand in or, yeah. took a th- you know, things like that. So, but no, yeah, I love the mechanics of it. It was close between that and Hubris, but I th- uh, yeah, I, if I could have both of them, I would have them both on there, right? Just to fill my name out as well. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, I was with, uh, with Gary on this. I really enjoyed that too. I, I did, yeah. I think it's a good. Did you play that one, Steve? Uh, another fish nope. Master. I listened to Raj and Main Fan, and I'm I'm not. It's it's on my wish list if they if they get the price low enough that that I take the gamble, I'll, I'll play it because I did like the first one. Uh, but but their complaints, you know, stop the sale of a game. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Podcasts do have an influence after all. Uh, yeah, I uh, yeah, I think it's a good game anyway. But that's um, that's it. I've got. We have got. Does anybody want to mention a few anyway? Because one one of yeah, the I've got a few. One of yeah. one of the stipulations that we had actually, which cut out a few of mine, was because we didn't want. Uh, re-releases um, on a platform so they had to be new games basically and one of the ones I quickly want to mention is Windlands 2 on Quest it's to me it, oh, it's just yeah. unbelievable how they've got that on there the it runs so well it's such a fantastic little game mechanic in Windlands we all know what Windlands is so I won't bang on yeah. about it but I think, I mean, that I think that's one of the first ones we played right last year one of the first ones I mean the yeah. first video we jumped in and recorded yeah. that's when I hurt my neck 10 seconds before recording <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I really enjoyed that too. That's it's fantastic. Good it's absolutely fantastic game. I I will stand by it. It never gets mentioned as well. I don't understand, but yeah, I think it's a great game. I think it's one. It, yeah, it does look and run amazing. Yeah. Um, but I think it's one of those games where you need to play it with other people, um, because it is it is ninety percent just swinging around to get to the boss. You know, collect stuff and then get to the boss. Yeah. And fight yeah. The boss. I think, I think that, that, yeah, you're right. I, and I think that swinging mechanic has to be, it has to be like compelling enough. Just, it feels yeah. good enough to me that I, I just enjoy jumping in. Yeah. But when, when you've got league constantly plummeting to us, <laughs> don't follow me sure, if you're playing the game. It just makes it worthwhile. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, sorry, I'm just going to hang of it, Rod. I'm just going to hang of it. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Yeah. It went, oh, no, I'm following you. Oh, this mm-hmm. ravine, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, don't, don't follow Lee. Yeah, don't I'll, follow don't me. Don't you'll follow be fine. me when you're playing anything. <laughs> I'll, uh, I've still not I'll, played any more, actually. I need to play. So I, I've actually went in on my own to try and play a little bit. I was playing like the time trial things of it, but I was totally yeah, sucked. Yeah. And then I was like, I need to jump in with, with other people to get the game, to play the game. I'll, I'll quickly mention Genotype as well. I think that was a good game, but not mm. really worthy of, the, of this list. Uh, Vertigo 2, as I've already mentioned. But yeah, uh, go yeah. on. You, you... Vertigo 2 does does need shouting yeah. out, really, because what one person managed to do is astonishing. Yeah. It's, it, I'm proper envious. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it is so it is, it is really good. The only reason it wouldn't didn't make my list was I just don't think it's balanced. Mm, yeah, yeah. It's just it just isn't balanced right, and that's the that's the complaint I've got about it. Um, but the the PSVR two versions out shortly, isn't it? If it isn't already, yes, uh, 15, 16, 15, 15, 15, 16, something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Right next week. <clears throat> oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, hopefully, that, hopefully, a bit of balancing might have gone off along along with the port. Uh, but yeah, definitely really good. For my stuff, Synapse, um, which as it just like I think I said at the time, it just makes you feel like a total badass, like no other game does. It's it was just really good. The problem I had with it was the length, and even though again it's another game that's designed to be replayed, when you replay it, unlike say something like I don't know Ghost Signal, you, it doesn't remix anything. You, you, the start point in each level might be different, but it's still the same level. You know, the, the power-ups might be in different places, but, the, you know, it's still the same landscape you're going through again. And that's what let it down for me. There wasn't enough yeah, variety yeah. there. But it was it was a great, even with reprojection, it was a great game. I, I enjoyed my time with it. I thought it was really good. Um, the Rumour Dark Matter as well. Um, I, I, I ummed and with this, but Seventh Guest just took it, eas- I think, mm-hmm. easily. But if you like Seventh Guest, try the Rumour Dark Matter. And the other thing with the Rumour Dark Matter as well, technically it came out in like 2020 on another platform. 
Yeah, my uh, it, it's it's not yeah, it's, you it's know, played out so with the Rift test. I, I couldn't really include it. You know. so, you know, I kind of included Hubris on mine, which did come out on PC <laughs> originally, but. Uh, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I was wondering about that actually <laughs> yeah. when you talked about yeah. it. Yeah. That's a good point. Um, oh well, that's I mean, a I can't even say. Well, I'll for maybe Resident Evil Four. I really enjoyed that, but then again, that's another <laughs> platform. From oh. yeah. Look, these, these are just personal choices, yeah. aren't they? It's not as if we're yeah. giving out a choice. Well, no, yeah. I mean, I did want to give a, a special mention to Walk About Mini Golf, as always. But I mean, people probably mm. uh, would uh, presume that I would have that on the list. But I mean, that's just on the list. Yeah forever basically yeah, yeah. you know with yeah. the constant updates to doing one other one as well which i couldn't really include would would have been that the was red matter 2 the psvr yeah. port the psvr 2 port yeah. um which was just oh yeah I, w- I went into play it for half an hour just to see what it was like and played through the entire game again um yeah okay. that's another one I still need to play as well mm. yeah <laughs> okay uh steve anything to mention nope you guys have already covered them the only other one that i had that we've already talked about was Asgard's too. Okay, yeah. Mm. Um, okay, just very quickly then, next week we've got Bulletstorm VR coming out on the PC Quest and PSVR 2. So we'll see what that's all about. Hopefully it's pretty good. And we've also got a, a Ret- Retropolis 2, Never Say Goodbye. It's like a point-and-click yeah. adventure, isn't it, that one, I think, in VR? Yeah, I've not. I still. I think I'm pretty sure I own the first one, and it's one of those where I keep thinking, "Oh, I should yeah. play this." I think I'd probably like it, and then I've never got around to playing it. Yeah. But yeah, the sequel sequel's out next week. Yeah, yeah. I've. Um, I think it's only about thirty minutes, forty five minutes long. Anyway, that first one, from what I've heard. Oh right. Um. So, I th- I think this one might be longer, but yeah, that point and click kind of vibe in VR is yeah. seems pretty good. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this episode of Recentered. So, any anything to finish off on, anybody? I'll say no. thanks again. Um, it's no. always good to come on from 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 time to time. I, I hope my audio is better. I actually had to take a mic apart and fix it because uh, my <laughs> my my podcast mic had been broken the last few episodes. So out that I joined you guys on. So I've this time uh, my my audio. my audio should hopefully be back to quality. So. Um, yeah, again, it was good to be on. Yeah, sounds fine. Excellent. Yeah, thanks for coming on, Steve. And we'll get you on again when there's a new headset or a new piece of software that we want to talk about anyway. <laughs> uh, but of awesome. course, I was going to ask Steve very quickly, are you picking up the Apple headset at all? Ah. So I mentioned being very blessed. I'm not that blessed. I'm not that spoiled. <laughs> I was thinking. <laughs> you have space on your shelf at the back there. You could put it on there. No, I cannot. I can't. I just. I can't. I can't rationalize that. So I, I did hear. I think they are, uh, at least here in the U.S. I think they're going to open up demos soon in store. Yeah. So I'd like to go check it yeah. out, mm. and and maybe you know maybe I come on and, and we I can give impressions of That's that it. because it's going to be That's hard right. I think to just get impressions of it probably because yeah who's going to yeah like I just. I can spend three thousand dollars on a toy. I can't spend three thousand dollars on a toy that I think I'll play with for a week and then hardly use. Yeah. Right. And that's yeah, that's yeah, where it gets yeah. real hard. Yeah. Yeah. The, I um, think someone put who's going to spend three and a half grand just to play Fruit Ninja and watch three D <laughs> films, but people will. I'm very interested in the the spatial video recording and playback, and yeah. you know, I I I, I could see that having a profound effect on people you know in the future kind of like memory engine that that you know maybe have a loved yeah. one that passes away or something so i i think that would probably be my biggest draw but still i can't i can't justify three grand yeah yeah that's a thing but that's a good point though if you do get a demo on it steve then that would be a good uh good time to come back on the podcast so yeah, February definitely. 2nd, I think it is, it's being released in the US, so presumably you can get demos from that date onwards. Um, but yeah, looking forward to uh, giving that a try when it get, eventually comes over to UK. Anyway, I'm going to book a de- demo myself, so we'll see. But uh, that's it. Thank you very much for watching or listening to episode 32 of Recentered. I will be back in a couple of weeks, I guess. And lots of stuff i think so yeah happy new year (laughs) (laughs) yep see you uh yeah see you in a couple of weeks bye cheers everyone take care